Good afternoon and welcome. This is the championship round of the uh, the 2022 Caiaphas battle for uh, for 2022. My name is Tony Lightfoot. I'm glad to have the pleasure of your company. Uh, right up front, before uh, before we get into the running orders and stuff like that, an apology has to be made about uh, uh, the uh, the coverage for the, the third round. Unfortunately, our internet situation is, is dire at best in terms of actually uploading a signal. We're trying best I can, best we can to improve the signal so you can get the kind of coverage that you're able to uh, to enjoy uh, yesterday. But at the moment, we uh, we are struggling a little bit with the upload of our signal. We do apologize up front uh, for that and and any uh, and any loss of coverage uh, that you might have experienced in the third round uh, just a uh, just a little over an hour ago. Having said that, if you, if you are looking, if you do want, want to and are interested in watching the coverage of the third round, especially I would uh, surmise uh, Aaron Davies who scored halfway down 10.25 meters, I'm sure he, at, le at the very least he'll want to look at his performance. We're going to upload that because we do have the ability to actually record our coverage as we uh, as we stream them, as we upload them live, and uh, we'll up we'll do our best to upload the third round of this competition at uh, at a later time with a much better upload signal, so you can get the, the full quality of uh, of what uh, was witnessed uh, live during that round. Anyway. Championship round. We got uh, Alicia Bagnoli taken to the water first, followed by Beatrizia Yanni. Then Ali Nicholson will be second to last out, and then Jamie Ball, the four skiers in the women's competition. So, what have we got in so far as the men's leaderboard is concerned? Will Ash is still in the lead, and that score from Aaron Davies of three at 10.25 meters vaults him up into second spot ahead of Benjamin Stadelbauer, who lies in third now. Jakobonia with two at 10.25 meters. He has a superior backup score to Matteo Luceri and you'll see the rest of the leaderboard in the men's competition. We got our dancing girls, we've got our skiers and now we're getting ready for our championship round of skiing right here in uh, Caiaphas in uh, the, uh, the west coast of uh, Peloponnesia in Greece and uh, we'll have a full coverage starting with the women's competition in just a few minutes right after these.
All right then, back to uh, to live coverage, live action here at the uh, the Cafias battle for 2022. I beg your pardon. Uh, we've got a lot of great slalom in action to come. We've got the four ladies about to take to the water, and then we've got uh, the the ten men uh, finalist, and we'll uh, we'll show you those in just a moment with the running order. Starting off with George Hatsis, then we'll uh, follow on with Nick Parsons. Here's your open women start for starters. Banyoli, Yani, Nicholson, and uh, Jamie Ball will round off the performances in the women's competition. That competition will take to the water first. Hive of activity around this spot, as you can probably see behind me, the uh, the opposite bank is uh, is is thronging with uh, with the locals, with the uh, the people who come out in their masses to watch this event. Also along the shore side here, adjacent to the announcing point, there is a, there is certainly a good feeling and a good vibe to this competition. We knew that coming in. We knew that the, the Greeks were uh, were especially hospitable and uh, that uh, that has been delivered and how. Looking, uh, looking at the, uh, the opposite shoreline, yeah, you can get a, a, a grasp, an appreciation for, uh, for what we're working with here at the, uh, the Kafias uh, battle for 2022. Last time we held this competition was 2005 and it's been uh, the best part of two decades since that last competition. And uh, we're so glad that we've, that we've made the return. As you can see there, uh, Lorenzo Di Alberto in Lorenzo's land will be uh, conducting the interviews on the dockside. And go vote for your skier of the day, waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. Let's check in with Lorenzo's land for the first time in this final. Welcome back to the dock. We're here with Alice getting ready for the final round of the Cayafas battle. Alice, we didn't see you too happy about round one, round two and round three, but I'm pretty sure you know what to do and how to get through this final, right? Yeah, I was a little unsettled the third round, but the second round it felt amazing. So. Um, the wind picked up just a little bit, so it's, it's always good to have a little breeze. And honestly, I'm shocked for how many people that are on site. So it just it's bringing me a good mood, and uh, we're all pumped. All right, perfect, perfect. Yeah, the vibe here looks amazing. We see all you guys having a lot of fun, and we hope you can conquer and do your best in this final. Get ready, get focused. Back to you, Tony. All right, thank you very much, uh, Lorenzo, and certainly a lot of storylines coming into this event. Five-star event, this uh, this competition as part of the Water Ski Pro Tour. A lot of uh, stories that could potentially be written. Could uh, Jamie Ball will come through with another win, a third win on the trot? Uh, could uh, could Beatrizia Yanni get on the podium for the second time in as many tournaments in the Water Ski uh, Pro Tour? A lot of things, uh, a lot of moving parts, and uh, we're so glad that you can tune in and watch this event. For those of you who didn't uh, didn't pick up on what I commented at the at the beginning, uh, huge apologies uh, for those of you unable to watch the round three. But rest assured, we are we are doing our best with the with the signal that we have, the upstream signal, and we will be re-uploading the round three in its uh, in its full pristine quality when we get the opportunity to with a better with a better signal after the event has completed concluded. All right then, let me tell you about Flowpoint Method, created by Marcus Brown and Jenny Labar. They offer online coaching and nutritional support, and they are all you need to ski at your best. Go to flowpointmethod.com, flowpointmethod.com. So, and also check out Rap Skis uh, while you're online, created by Jody Fisher, built in Cyprus to his uh, unique and, uh, and demanding specifications. Try one at uh, Jody Ski School in Lake Gifford in Central Florida. And also check out the gate guide system. That is Rap Skis created by Jody Fisher. A throng of uh, people here have been entertained by our uh, dancing girls. And here's an example of one of those trophies which will be uh, handed out today at the end of the uh, the final round. There's Alicia Bagnoli. 
She's probably probably thinking of joining the uh, the dancing girls after she gets done skiing. So, a local announcer getting everyone uh, uh, buzzed and everyone uh, getting behind our skiers. And our DJ on, on the side as well, we're doing his best to, uh, to hype up the, uh, the crowd. Four skiers in this women's final starting off with Alicia Bagnoli. Three rounds so far, she's come up short of running at 11.25 meters. Let's see if she can dig deep and come up with the goods this time around. Μια πολύ μεγάλη έκπληξη, μια ένα πολύ μεγάλη, πολύ μεγάλη έναρξη αυτή του τελικού. Για να δούμε πώς θα ξεκινήσει. So. There is uh, our open women's running order. Licha Bagnoli will take the water first. Followed by uh, Beatrice Yatni. She's been doing a fine job out there on the water and also on the, uh, on the analyte analyst microphone as well we certainly appreciate her then also uh, Ali Nicholson doing the same thing for us as well and uh, then uh, Jamie Paul will be our last female skier to take to water so we've got the pieces ready to go we've got the dancing girls First time I've ever seen that at a first time I've ever seen that at the ski tournament. Maybe the dancing girls ought to come away with the with the uh, with the skier of the day prize. Well, I don't think they actually qualify, but one of our skiers does. And uh, whilst uh, we uh, you get your votes together for skier of the day, let's check in with Lorenzo's land once again. All right, everybody, welcome back to Lorenzo's land here. We're about to start the finals of the Cayavas battle. We already spoke with Alicia, who's just here in the shade, resting a bit. All the athletes already skied three times. They all get to go into the final, and now they get to battle for this little trophy right here. This is what everybody is hoping to bring home. And just the vibe here, guys, let me tell you, it's amazing. Look at the shoreline getting crowded, full with people, both sides of the lake. And I have to say, I have Yorgo here, the organizer of the tournament, who put up an amazing, amazing, amazing event. And would like to have a few words from you. Thank you very much, first of all. And let us hear what, what you think about the event. Back to you, Tony. <laughs> Thank you very much, Yorko, and back to you, Tony. <laughs> uh, that never gets old, does it? Anyway, uh, we've got uh, the women's slalomers about to take to the water, and one of them is going to be a bringing home a big old shining trophy, along with a whole wad full of cash. And uh, could it be Alice? Could it be uh, Beatrice? Could it be Ali? Or uh, our leader after uh, after three complete uh, after two complete tournaments, could uh, Jamie Ball come away with the win? So just waiting for the so could uh, Beatrice at least get on the podium for the second uh, com competition in a row? A lot of things, a lot of things up for discussion here. And they certainly do everything possible to make the skiers comfortable. We even even use uh, shading by, with the form of a camouflage net on the dock. And if our dock uh, our camera gets the opportunity to take an, an exploration round, you can see you'll be able to see how big and comfortable the dock is concerned. But uh, we'll step aside for a moment, and then we'll return to hear the 2022 Kai Afras battle right here on the Western Peloponnesian coast. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality.
All right then, let's uh, let's continue on with the competition. Before we send our uh, first skier out, uh, a quick reminder that Pro Gear still producing high quality gloves. They are the original created by Clint Stadelbauer and now led by Alicia Bagnoli, who just happens to be our first skier off the dock in the women's competition. Buy now at skiprogear.com, skiprogear.com. And we're just waiting for the green light from our officials. Moving some boats out the way. Also trying to get settled in to our, to our uh, upstream uh, so far as the internet is concerned, uh, making sure that it, it's the best that, uh, that you can have at, uh, at this given moment. So here we are at the, the uh, Caiaphas Battle Pro um, event. We've seen a whole slew of skiers in the, uh, in the amateur rounds uh, compete here. And uh, there were some pretty darn good, uh, good scores. Uh, some of them actually uh, reaching towards uh, national records in, in Greece. So that kind of gives you an idea of how this place skis. Uh, there was uh, there was a little bit of concern among our pros and even some of the amateur skiers about how this how this uh, facility would 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 ski. Many of them having not skied on brackish water before, but uh, but I think the proof is in the pudding for a lot of our a lot of our competitors, especially the pros, have demonstrated that 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 some of some of the uh, the highest scores are achievable here. I mean, we, we had a course record which was uh, completed by Will Asher with four at 10.25 meters. That was in round one. We had, uh, that was a tie for the course record. Uh, we had uh, a new course record uh, by Jamie Ball. Uh, that was completely smashed out the park. I mean, she got into 10.75 meters uh, pretty deep into that pass, I do have to say. Uh, the score for her was four at 10.75 meters. So we're looking forward to seeing some uh, some great stuff from those two competitors. Each of them, by virtue of their top scores, will be starting last off the dock. So as we continue to roll right along, let me tell you about Drew Ross Realtor. Go to Instagram, Instagram and uh, go to Drew Ross Realtor. If you are looking to purchase lakefront property in Central Florida, be sure to check with Drew Ross. He is a real realtor, he is a broker, and he will get you set right for the, uh, the house of your dreams in Central Florida. Drew Ross Realtor on Instagram. All right, also, let me tell you about Be Play Fuel. Be Play Fuel. Go vote for your favorite matches during this event and register to upload your own. And during the course of these events, I've had the pleasure of, uh, of having an analyst uh, uh, team, two analyst team, uh, had uh, Ali Nicholson and uh, Beatrizia Yani. Obviously a little bit indisposed of at the moment because they're about to ski, but our uh, male, male ca their male counterparts have been, uh, been Aaron Davies and uh, Corey Vaughan. And may I suggest to, to whomever is uh, controlling the matches for bplayfield.com to, uh, to create matches as to who the best team of analysts are. Are they the girls? Are they the guys? Bplayfuel.com, bplayfuel.com. Check it out, you'll be impressed. Yes, and...
That's all I can say while I, I don't know whether you're in, in London or in Lima or in San Francisco or Santiago. Greece is setting a high bar right now. Yeah, I mean, I literally just walked down uh, from like where, you know, where we're all hanging out down there. And I tell you what, the vibe down here is electric. Um, I've never seen anything like this. You know, the, you know, you, the Collegiate Nationals is up there as one of my favorite events and this is this is coming up very very close um, you know it's so fun everyone's having a good time we've got live music out here we've got dancers it's gonna unlike anything I've ever been to uh, so a live saxophonist yeah so incredible incredible vibes over here um, it's so different like you stood on the dock and there's loud music there's dancers there's a live saxophone right next to you so it's definitely something you're gonna have to think about uh, coming into your set. Let's check in with Lorenzo's world for one of many times. All right, everybody, welcome back to the dock. We're here with Beatrice, Alice just left here. So, Bea, what do you think about the vibe of this tournament? It's it's amazing, like, it's literally like fun. It's really, really fun. I was dancing with the girls and now I'm ready on the dock to ski. So you're focused for the skiing or you're more concentrated about the dancing? We'll see. I'm still, I'm still a bit confused. I'm still in a dancing mood, but yeah. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the dancing mood is going to dance you through your next couple of passes. So good luck to you, Bea, and back to you, Tony. Why, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we're having trouble holding it together here at the, at the announcer's point. I mean, come on, uh, Aaron. Yeah, I'm just dancing away, you know. My, my feet are tapping and... Uh, yeah, my feet are tapping away, so we'll see how it is later on. Uh, but right now, our first skier out on the water is Alice Bagnoli out of Italy. She'll be starting on the 14-meter line. Not no. looking too bad off number one. Yeah. Gets a good load there, as she typically does on this, this opening pass. 
looking really, really strong. You know, as, like we said before, on that one three five side, just an amazing onside turn. And she's, you know, as we said many times before, she's just sticking on the cruise control. She's pumped the fist, she's through her first pass. So look, really, really nice first pass there for Relice. Yes, and at the wheel, uh, uh, Giovanni Andronico are doing a fine, fine job in this tournament so far. And there you get a real sense of uh, how good of a vibe it is around here in uh, uh, Kiafas right now. Yeah, he's really making sure that he's he's taking that boat down the course, uh, making the conditions the same for everyone. You know, that's the main thing. Um, so, that, so it's very fair skiing. Right, you are. So look, she's going to be coming in on 30 meters now. In the entirety of this competition so far, a three rounds, uh, uh, Alicia Bagnoli is elected to ski all three rounds and unfortunately didn't come up with the, uh, with the six buoy count, 11.25 meters. Has she saved it all up for the championship round, we wonder? Yeah, you could argue that she, you know, she's playing the underdog right now. Um, she's coming in that, in that fourth position and at the moment, you know, we, we know that she has the ability to uh, to run that 11.25 pass, that 38 pass. So she's coming back now on 13 meters, just getting her eye in from that side of the lake. Uh, she's on the green loop. Let's see what she can, oh, a little bit down course of number one, but that's no uh, no big heel to climb for her. She's good to go around buoy number three, loads yeah, up just, well. See how strong she is out of that 135 side, you know. Check. Even though she is a little bit down course, she gets that ski around, just probably a little later than she wants to be but you know she knows that she's going to adjust in the uh, on the 12 meter pass nicely done a good good solid effort there from uh, from Alicia Bagnoli as we have a look at uh, Beatrice uh, Yanni comes to us out of uh, out of Rome whereas Alice comes to us out of Milan so 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 currently uh, in fourth place in the uh, the points uh, is uh, Beatrice and uh, so we'll see if she can ascend up a little bit higher on the uh, the Wolski Pro Tour points. Yeah, she's got to uh, she's got to uh, get get a few points this time to go above Ali Garcia, who's got 83, I believe, at the moment, as you saw on your screen. So trying to climb up the ladder in the Water Ski Pro Tour there. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what she can do. Uh, but right now on the water at the end of the lake, we've got a leeche. She's ready to come in on her 12 meter pass. Uh, so we'll. Uh, see what she can produce but the vibe here is nothing like I've ever experienced it's you know it's the Greek way everyone's having fun you know it seems like the, the pressure seems just to be just that off just a little bit because we're all having so much fun um, but here we go Alice coming in now on 12 meters on the uh, 35 off line length see how strong she is through that wake they round one She's a bit pulled forward at two there. She did do the big three, which she gets. Oh, yeah, so she does. Now she knows she has to keep working, uh, but there you go. Look, nice and easy by the end. That could be a wake-up call, and that could actually have helped her out going down the line a little bit. Yeah, you know, she got that little bit of hesitation at two. We'll see what happened here, but she knew she needed a big three, and, and she got it, and uh, that's just, you know... See here, she gets a decent one, a little bit of a double pump, a little bit back on the ski, you would argue. Uh, but coming here into two, you just see she pushes on that ski, gets pulled up. Um, now she knows, right, I need to turn here. And she gets that good, strong turn that we know she can get. And then coming here into, into, into four there, just maintaining uh, the time that she has. She's a little bit down course, but nothing too much. And she's turning five and six. By the time she gets to six, she's nice and early. So. You know, not too much to worry about there for Alice, but she, she could do with, you know, just ramping it up a little bit at the start on this 11 pass. So uh, we'll see what she does. All right. So which, which, one, which one of these Italians uh, gets on the podium in the Water Ski Pro Tour? And will that be enough for your vote for skier of the day? Waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. Waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play and vote for your skier of the day. And also check out some more interactivity, go to see a bplayfuel.com, bplayfuel.com. Let's see if she can run it for the first time in four so rounds she, of skiing. She's round one, that's a good one. She need, that's two, oh, she's got that same two. Horrible number two, she she's gets around, around three, three. And that can't quite hold it, so that's gonna be two and a half. I hope that didn't hurt her shoulder too much, she just seemed to be holding it a little bit when she went into the water. Um, 
So, let's see what happened here. She seemed to have an okay one. She got pulled up a little bit. That's that momentary hesitation. So strong through that gate. Yeah, Get, extended. Gets a, gets a good one, really. You know, she's got good enough to run it there. Just gets pulled up a little bit into two, I think. A little bit narrow. She has to really reach for two. And I just sends her down course for three. And she can't quite hold it there. Um, I hope that shoulder's all right. She seems to be holding it a little bit. Yeah, exactly. It took a little bit of a hit there on the left shoulder. And unfortunately, therefore, Alicia Bagnoli unable to get uh, any higher than, uh, than two and a half with uh, with that performance two and one half 11.25 meters that is the score for Alicia Bagnoli and that sets the stall for our remaining skiers this is the championship round the uh, the other three three rounds were uh, were for seeding so uh, this is this is where all the money is going to going to be going to yeah so like you know we came into this tournament and uh, we've we've said look there's there's, there's the four girls, they all get through to the final automatically. Um, so they were, you know, just familiarizing themselves with the with the, uh, with the the site and things like that. Hence why I don't think Jamie wanted to ski in the third round, just just to preserve herself a little bit. Uh, we'll see if that paid off for her uh, shortly. Uh, but all all the the rest of the girls, so Beatrice, um, Alice, and Ali, all decided to take that third round, um, you know, just to get a little bit more practice in, things like that see how the lake's doing, especially today. It's different conditions from yesterday. So a few different little strategies going out there, uh, but but see see what pays off for, for different people. All right, and we'll see uh, see what uh, Beatrizia Yanni can do, our Alice's uh, teammate and traveling companion. Uh, but before we uh, we uh, give you the details on Beatrizia, let's, uh, let's check in with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're sitting here on the leader's couch with Alice. Alice, tell us a little bit what happened out there. <laughs> I'm not sure. I was just honestly uh, with all the people here, I was so pumped. Uh, I was not fully concentrated about skiing. I was just thinking about like how cool the, the tournament is and the situation is. So I'm um, just running a little bit late from 13, 12 and on. And uh, I, I didn't have a good one at 11. So then I tried to pull, but well, what happens? Well, it happens, but um, we're happy that you're here. We're happy that you had a good time. Got the Rest. Throne. Got the throne. <laughs> yeah, you're sitting on the throne. Rest, awesome. relax on this throne, and we'll see you later. Back to you, Tony. Yes, indeed. We've got our leader's couch uh, uh, being, uh, uh, being sat in right now by Alicia Bagnoli. How long she stays there for is going to be another matter because her uh, teammate, traveling companion, and uh, tw 10, 10 years of senior is uh, Beatrizia Yani about to come into the course. Yeah, so Beatrice, uh, you know, taking a little bit of a break from the pro water ski scene for a while due to injury and things like that, and I think trying to get her career going. Uh, but back on it right now, it's coming in on 14.25, that 28 offline length, uh, you know, just trying to, I don't know, maybe even calm down after the dock. Uh, you got these this live saxophone with you and uh, these dancers all around. So it's, it's a very busy dock, it's co very different compared to what you see, like, I don't know, the Swiss Pro and things like that. And speaking of the dock, uh, we're going to head over to Lorenzo. All right, as we see Alicia and having a great time on the couch, we're here on the dock with Ali, next gear in the water. So. How's the vibe? How are you feeling with this vibe? Definitely unlike any other pro event I've ever been at, but it's really fun. So uh, excited to get out there and uh, take my shots if I can get take the, the, the leaderboard couch here. All right, perfect. We really hope to see you sitting there. Like we hope everybody to get a chance to sit there. Get focused, get concentrated. Best of luck and back to you, Tony. So uh, Ali Nicholson currently second in the Water Ski Pro Tour standings right now on 96 points. Uh, still uh, a ways adrift uh, from uh, uh, from Jamie Ball right now, who is the only person in the Water Ski Pro Tour with a points total uh, exceeding 100 points, whether it be the men's uh, uh, point rankings or indeed the uh, the women's at this time. So uh, so, so uh, Jamie Ball looking to uh, to solidify. With a third win on the trot, Alicia Bagnoli on the uh, the dock on the uh, the dock, hoping that uh, that her compatriot from Italy would uh, would play Santa Claus and uh, give her a top three spot on the podium. Yeah, you know she's looking for that, but Beatrice is looking strong all weekend. 
you know, she's looking to get down the end of the 11.25 pass. So she, she runs through this 13 meter pass really, really nice. Nice and smooth, just looking, getting dialed, getting feeling from both ends of the lake. And, and now she moves on to the 12 meter line. All right, and that, that boat driven by Giovanni Andronico and uh, is doing good in the beautiful sunshine. And uh, we've, uh, we've got our TWBC camera there, our operator doing an exceptional job. And uh, yeah, we can't thank the, uh, the crew enough behind the scenes, behind the cameras, in the building next to us over here. Uh, you know, Vino and his crew doing an amazing job, as well as yourself, Tony. Uh, but the, the guys behind the scenes, the ones you don't see, we've had to recruit a few people uh, to operate the cameras from Greece. Uh, so thank you to those guys for stepping up and, and really appreciate all of you. All right then, and uh, on top of all of that, I uh, do want to say, extend apologies to those of you looking to, uh, to view uh, the third round of, uh, of, of uh, skiing, unfortunately due to uh, upload circumstances beyond our control, unable to provide you with the archive on that. However, we will be uploading that third round of action uh, uh, previously at a later time in its, uh, in its full and uh, pristine uh, resolution. So make sure you check that out after this event is done. All right now, 12 meters, uh, Beatrice Yanni in fourth place on the Pro Tour standings. We'll want to try and uh, get up a little bit higher if she can possibly make it. Uh, currently in third place in the Pro Tour standings is Ali Garcia, not here skiing, but uh, Beatrice Yanni looking to take advantage of that situation and getting around all five and round six buoys there. Yeah on 12 meters yeah looking good you know good how you just got her hips a little bit behind her at four but nothing that's too drastic and just manages to correct it on the ne on the next boy on number five and just getting out of that pass uh, really really nice there see how she's a tall girl one of the taller girls here and um she's really using that height to her advantage she swings out lets the ski move out and move back just turning a little bit late maybe for a 12 meter pass so she'll be wanting thinking about you know, getting back under the line real quick, um, but, you know, for this 11, 11 to 5 pass, you know, the, with the line being 25 centimeters shorter than the length of the, the line to the, uh, uh, the, sorry, the boy line to the boat. Um, so, yeah, she's got to make that up with her reach um, on the next pass. So she'll be thinking about, you know, getting under the line, just getting going as soon as possible. All right, so far as Beatrice Yanni is concerned, if she gets more than two and a half, then she will take the lead and uh, guarantee herself a spot on the podium. Remember, there are only two competitors remaining after Bea. And don't forget, she'll also be sitting in that throne. Absolutely. That's on dockside being occupied by Alicia Bagnoli right now. There's uh, Bea There's on one. number one. She's coming out of two. two, looking good so far. Come on, Bea, She'll looking really lead. good. She She's outside of three. She can. She, oh, did she get outside of four? I'm not oh. sure. She doesn't think she did either. Uh, but she got three. She has taken the lead from Aliche, uh, but I know she was looking for a little bit more out of that. You can see it in her expression there. Let's see what happened here. I thought she had a good start, honestly. She came out of one with a tight line. Like, comes, there you go. Stands nice and tall, comes out. A little bit on the back out of one. You see here coming into two, she's a, li a little bit like Liche, a little bit narrow towards two. Um, and just on there, it's really on the back of the ski there out of three. And does, inside yeah, four. Yeah, I would say inside four as well. Um, unfortunate there for Bea, uh, looking to get a little bit more down that pass. Uh, but still, she takes the lead. Uh, she guarantees herself a place on the podium. And she gets to sit in the hot seat for And a she gets to sit in the hot seat for a while. Uh, we'll see what Ali can do after her. But really, really good skiing there from Bayer. You know, four rounds of skiing in, in, in uh, two days. It's, all, it's always a lot, you know. Oh, you've got less passes than a practice set, maybe. But, you know, it's all in the in your mental aspect. It, it's, it's hard. It's hard on the body. It's hard on the mind. Um, so great skiing this weekend from Bayer. Nicely done as she swims into shore and uh, Alice, gracious as she is, you know, welcomes her traveling companion teammate from Italy, uh, Beatrice Yanni. Yeah, you see her dancing away there as well with the music. Ah, oh, she gets pushed in. So there's Bea coming in now, ready to take her place on the hot seat on the on the leaders on the leader chair. 
and let's check in uh, in just a moment there with well. well we'll 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 talk to Lorenzo in a little while um but yeah so I don't know where that we're, you know, what's third place on the uh, on the pro points? They, they get to quite a few points, right? And we'll, I don't know whether that's enough to take her above Ali Garcia, who's in third place. Uh, Bayer currently in fourth. So we'll see what happens to the, uh, the uh, leaderboard after that. But up next, we've got Ali Nicholson getting ready on the dock. Uh, I saw she was having a little bit of a dance before, you know, so she's nice and relaxed. And uh, let's go over to Lorenzo on the dock. Hey everybody, welcome back to the dock where you have a battery who just got seated on the leader's throne. Well, Beth, I think you're pretty stuck starting that it's your second pro event podium. Yeah, I'm very happy. Not very happy with my score because one ball looked pretty amazing. I it mean, was. It I mean, was. I guess I'm really bad like uh, uh, going through that, that pass, you know, but still I'm having so much fun. It was like, it was great this morning. Like, it was, it's a great event. All right, perfect. Thank you very much, Bea. Enjoy your throne. And back to you, Tony. All right, then. And uh, Bea actually has an outside chance of uh, moving up a spot, unless uh, Ali, Ali uh, Nicholson has uh, some response to that. Yeah, we'll see what uh, Ali Nicholson can do in this set. We'll see what happens. If she can beat three, uh, that would obviously take Bea out of the hot seat. Um, but I don't, I don't know what that would quite do for the Pro Tour standings. We'd see, have to see what happened with that. Uh, we'd have to do some math, some number crunching. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but good, you know, we'll see, see what happens to Ali. She, you know, she's been looking to get through this uh, tenth, uh, the 11 meter pass all weekend. She's on a new ski. Uh, but here we go. She's coming in on the 13 meter line, so a line shorter than the other two. Uh, you know, she usually goes out on 13 meters here and making it look really, really easy so far. Just, well, you know, picking up where she left off in the previous round and uh, great skiing there from Mali. So let's go check out Lorenzo in his land on the dock. All right, welcome back to the dock. So Jamie, we saw you taking a little break this morning, not skiing the third round. Were you a little concerned about uh, you being tired for the final? Um, I think three rounds for prelim was kind of a lot, so I was just trying to reserve some energy. I'm feeling good, but didn't really see the need to ski this morning and wanted to save it for the crowd. All right, perfect. Well, we got a big crowd. Everybody just got done cheering you up. How do you feel about the vibe of this tournament? Yeah, it's awesome. It's cool to see something new in the sport and a little more vibes to a tournament, so it'll be good. All right, perfect. Thank you very much, Jamie. Best of luck, and back to you, Tony. All right, then, and we saw the graphic at the top of the page uh, showing that uh, Jamie Ball has the best score of the competition. That's significant. That would actually give her two additional points should she uh, survive out of this uh, championship round with, uh, with the best score of the competition. And uh, we'll see if that uh, ends up uh, earning enough of your vote to, uh, to give her the skier of the day. Uh, check in with waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. Also check out New Dimensions, online training and nutritional programs located next to the Millennium Mall in Orlando. Trusted by the pros, T. Gas, Alice, Freddy Krueger, Whitney McClintock, Rini and Pedrini. Check out New Dimensions online. So here comes, uh, here comes Ali on her 12 meter pass. Oh, just making a little bit of an error there at four, but nothing she can't correct at five and looking nice out of six and through the exit gates. So uh, good skiing there from Ali and yeah, extra two points for the best score of the weekend. Uh, you know, it's a little bit like the fastest lap in Formula One. Uh, it just gives you that little bit of an advantage. If you get, you know, two or three of those in the season, they start to add up and they, that's, that's, as you know, that's six or eight points there. Uh, that could take you up a spot. So that's very significant and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. But right, like th this pass looks really nice here for Ali. This makes a slight, you know, slight, slight error here on four. Just pushes a little bit, but she gets her ski down, gets going here at five, and, you know, really solid ski in there from Ali. Just absolutely hammering that one away. 13 meter start and uh, 12 meters she just cleared. Now she's on 11.25 meters where she knows that she can secure at least a second spot by actually getting past halfway down the course and if she continues to ski uh, uh, 
for some for some more buoys complete the pass then then it could be game on between uh, uh, Ali Nicholson and the last gear to take to water whom you see right there Jamie Ball from Canada yeah so we know you know Jamie is a very capable skier uh, he should probably you know trying to zone out everything that's going on around or on the dock it is a very action-packed dock compared to what we see like at the likes of Swiss Pro and anything else but here comes Ali on the 11.25 meter line. Great one there, Just really strong out to two. Little bit tip rise at two. She's out to three, she's still in it. Come on, Ali. She's really strong, come on. She's out towards five, she turns five. She's gonna make it out to six. Great skiing there oh, from Ali. Wow. Really amazing, amazing skiing, so. Yeah, that was wow all the way from start to finish there. And she took a, took a bit of a, uh, of a safety check on five and then she just bore down on that edge. Just all the way. Look at this gate, look how strong it is compared to the other passes. You see her really make sure she's getting out wide for one, really nice one there. Coming out towards two. She has this very, very tiny moment there, but she, she gets the ski down, gets across course. She's like, right, I gotta work, work, work. So she's coming around three there, looking really, really good. There, it happens again at four, that, that offside turn, but she knows here, right, big turn here at five, she gets it, and she just commits all the way out to six, and I, she's like, now, right, breathe, re, you know, collect yourself, you know, at the end of the dock, and uh, reset and repeat here for the uh, the 1075 pass, the 39 off pass. And because she's so light on the ski, she can accelerate just like that, off the turn. So, so fast, like, you, you see her, like, stop that ski and then boom she's going again so she's so strong uh you know her her, her muscle to weight ratio is is incredible it's got to be up there she's so light she's so strong getting across course as fast as possible so really great skiing there from ali so we'll have to see what she can do she can now put the pressure on jamie here um i think you know if you get getting outside of two and try and get a piece of three that's really uh a bit, a lot of pressure there. So here she comes, 10.75, coming in. She's got a great that. one there, amazing one. She's out towards two. two. Can she Go, make it out to three? Ah, oh, does she make it out to three? I'm not sure. We'll have to see what happens here on this instant replay. Yeah, we're um, going to have to check the handle on that one, you know, to see if she released the handle before she got that ski outside the buoy line. If she come, if she came up short, it would have been two. If she got the ski outside the buoy line. While she still had contact with the handle, then it will be a portion of so that number that three. A, that was a good, good start. That was a good enough start to get to three, but she's so strong into two. She just couldn't get that ski slowed down. So here we go. She, I can't tell whether she makes it around the boy there, um, but we'll probably see that replay again. Yeah, we'll probably see uh, that from the boat. Tonight. That's really, really close. Whether she had the handle at the boy line, that's going to be the thing that uh, determines it as well, as well as whether she got around the boy. Uh, you know, you have to have the handle by the here's, time you pass that boy line. So here's here, the clearest picture. Here's the boat view again. You know, really strong out of one. She gets a little bit of slack line, and I think she pulls a little bit long to two. But here's the here's the important bit. She coming out wide. I think she just dropped the handle before maybe. I think she got around it, but did she get around it after she let go of the line? Uh, that's for the judges to decide. It's two buoys. It's, it's, uh, I think it's two buoys confirmed there. Unfortunately, just dropping the handle just before the, uh, the time she passed that buoy line. So, you know, Jamie now uh, coming, you know, look, looking to get a little bit more than that. Oh, good, good skiing there from Ali. Uh, she's definitely put the pressure on. We'll have to see what Jamie could come up with after her. See you in a little while. So I'm sure we'll hear from Ali shortly. Uh, but, you know, you, you can you see go. it on the dock there. It's, it's absolutely crazy. It's a crazy. good vibe, but it's a, it's a little cruel whenever someone gets ejected from the sofa. They just chuck them straight in the water. I know, you get pushed in the water. It's kind of cruel, but... You know, it's something for the crowd to be involved with. You know, it's a bit of fun and stuff like that. Um, the only thing we're missing is a plank. I know, you just need the plank. Walk the plank, you know. Get some Pirates of the Caribbean going on there. Um, but it, you know, it's so, so different to anything you ever see. I mean, you know, it's in, it really, really good on the dock. And uh, we'll let's, go back to there. Let's go there now. All right, welcome back to the dock and welcome back to the leader's throne that Ali just took over. What an amazing score, Ali. You gave everything. What about Tubal? 
Man, that just, I would have given anything to have the start that I had last time. That just wasn't it for me. Honestly, the 38 was not that, it was not, was not that great. So I was happy to get through it. Um, anybody that's been following along the tour knows the struggle I've been going through with skis and whatnot. So I'm looking forward to a good solid week of getting some good practice in. It's been mostly uh, tournament rounds since last week. So uh, overall, pretty happy with the weekend. I got two, three rounds. So uh, looking for a bit more moving forward. All right, perfect. Well, relax on this run and get the, enjoy, your, uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you very much. And back to you, Tony. Okay, and with that score of two at 10.75 meters, it all but confirms that Beatriz Yani has, uh, has won her uh, second podium spot. She is in third right now. That's the best that she can finish. Alicia Bagnoli in fourth place. Now let's take a look at, uh, I believe we're going to take a quick look at the points so far as the... Uh, after we get done with Jamie skiing, and there you see her uh, holding that... Uh, that trophy aloft, but will it be hers eventually? Is that going to be her trophy as the winner, or will she have to relinquish that to uh, to Jamie Ball? We'll find out in the next few minutes. You know, it's funny. You're looking at that trophy there, and it looks great, and it, it is a great trophy. But we were discussing it before. How do we get that home? You know, um, it's going to be interesting making that, put that thing in a bag and shipping it. You know, and putting it in the uh, baggage hold back to America. Uh, but we'll see what we we'll see what happens. Happens, you know, we'll figure, it's always something you got to figure out. But here comes Jamie on her first pass. It'll be 13 meters. You know, this 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 is cruising pass here for Jamie. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so looking good. She's look. She's won the past two events, uh, both in uh, the Botas Ski Pro Am and the San Gervasio here in it uh, here in Europe. Um, got a late start to the season though, but she has definitely made more than made up for lost time. Yeah, you know, the, you know, I think I think school, you know, she graduated uh, top of her class as well with a 4.0 GPA, um, you know, so that's the equivalent of all A's here in Europe um, or all A stars even. You know, she she passed every single class with an A, so she's she's a worker, not just on the water but off the water. A uh, real credit to her team as well. Um, so she was concentrating on her studies a little bit at the start of the year, but that hasn't slowed her down in her skiing at all, as we can see this uh, this this year so far. And I mean, even last year, she, you know, she became world champion. You know, so really, really great skiing there from. Uh, and on her way to that world championship, she also uh, re rebroke the uh, the U21 world slalom record as well. You, are. you know, it's incredible. Uh, just. And she, and she won the World Under 21 Slalom title to boot as well. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's just, is there anything this girl can't do? Like, yeah, it's, it's incredible, incredible skiing, uh, incredible athlete on and off the water. Uh, so, she's coming back now on the 12 meter pass. You know, imagine this is a pretty cruisy pass for Jamie. Uh, She's been she's been looking so good here this weekend. She ran the uh, the 10.75 last weekend at San Gervasio in the first round, despite not having any practice at all in San Gervasio either. So we'll see what she can do in this set. But just look at this, like just swing it from one side to the other. Poetry you know, in motion. Poetry in motion. Textbook skiing. You know, if there's any anyone who's asking how should I be skiing, I'd say go watch Jamie Ball. No matter what pass she's on. She always looks the same, always looks strong, looking really, really good. So you just see here, like she's so strong across the wakes. Yeah, and just look, this pass just looks so easy. Nice, nice skiing here from Jamie. You know, the next pass, 11.25, it the, the the uh, the difficulty really ramps up. You know the line doesn't make it out to the boy line anymore, and that's even if you're perpendicular to the boat. So, you know, there's a lot of skiers that don't get up, quite up that far, um, but still make it around the boys. So, you got 25 centimeters extra you have to make at least. That's you know. So, and you're a little bit back on the boat. Obviously, that comes a little bit more. Probably ah. comes more like 50 centimeters, which you know, half a meter, two feet, something like that. And and this is something that I that I that I strain strain to to explain is the deflection angle going from one side to the next because it is a pure 180 degrees. You get you have to be resistant to that behind the boat 
otherwise it's going to eat your lunch. But here we go, Jamie's coming in on, the, on this must run pass to make sure she gets at least second. So she's around one here, come on Jamie, she's around two, Ooh. looking really, really good. She's around three, she's making this Whoa. pass look so easy compared, you know, Five. so, so easy. Like, Nicely that is done. not an easy pass to be running, and she makes it look textbook, absolutely textbook. Not an easy pass, but makes it look so, so easy. And just look at the gate shot as well. I mean, she was on fire right from the get-go here. Yeah, you look at Jamie's gate, and you just see she hits the same point on that gate every single time. You know, skied a little bit together at Lafayette, and, you know, even driving her, it's just like, is she even there? She's so light on the boat. Uh, she, she hits that same point in the gate every single time, hence why she's so consistent. Uh, but really, really great skiing for Jamie. Nice slide on five. Yeah, but it's just holding it well and great, great skiing there from Jamie. So already in second spot, she can't finish any lower than that, but the person that's on the couch right now currently holds the lead with two at 10.75, and that just happens to be the next pass that Jamie Ball will be approaching right here and now so we are so just to inform you guys we are if the leading score is the same after the final we will be running off and if if the score after that for second or third is a tie we will go back to backup scores uh, but that won't be the case we'll see what jamie can do here on that 1075 she's around one she's yeah, strong she's around one she's She's around two here. Whoa, Whoa. she gets the two. She, gets she the two and she makes it around number three. three. Doesn't have to do anything more. Great skiing and there from she's Jamie. Your she is our winner here today at the Kayafas Battle Pro Am. Great, great skiing there from Jamie. She is our winner here today with three on the 10.75 meter line. Let's just see here. That was an amazing start. Let's look at this start here. Coming out wide, moving back round. Beautiful. Absolute tight line of the whole time. Let's see what happened here at two. She just got on the back of the ski. I think she safety it a little bit because she, know, she knew she only had to get a piece of three. So you see there, just S turning three. That was, always, that was always a little bit nervy on number two, but she's the champion. She's the world champion for, and for good reason. And that is Jamie Ball there. She got the piece of four that she needed and a great, great uh, effort out there. So it's, uh, it's three buoys. Additionally, she also got the best score out of the competition so, with four at 10.75 meters. Yeah. So on top of the winner's points, she gets an additional two points uh, for the Water Ski Pro Tour standings. Yeah, that, that, you know, as we said before, those are really the, the two points that count, you know? That could be the difference between, you know, third and second or even, or even second and first as well. So we'll... Uh, Great skiing there from Jamie. Ali stood on the end of the dock there, ready to be pushed in. Oh, no. All right, everybody. That was Let's walk with Jamie to the front as she won the Kayafas battle. First time champion of the Kayafas battle. So how did you feel out there, Jamie? Yeah, I felt good. Um, 38 felt pretty solid. And I knew I needed to get a piece of three. I had a really good one. And then fell away really hard at a two. And was like, hey, well, and just wait for the line. Move out to three, get around it, and stand up for the win. All right, perfect. Smart move on your part. Enjoy your trophy, enjoy your couch, and congratulations. Back to you, Tony. Well, fantastic skiing there from Jamie Ball. We always had a sense that as soon as she's uh, left the dock that she, she, she had this. Yeah, she was dialed in right from the start, you know. She was very rested. She decided to take the third round off. You know, that paid off for her. Uh, looking really good, so... Great skiing there from Jamie, you see on the leaderboard there, Jamie Ball, three at 10.75. Ali in second place with two on 10.75. Beatrice Iani, Beatrice Iani, sorry, she comes, uh, comes home with third with three at 11.25. And coming in fourth there, Alice Bagnoli, two and a half and 11.25. So great skiing from all of our girls here today. So really, really good skiing. All right, let's have a look at the Pro Tour standings. I believe that's going to be shown in just a moment a moment or so. That should confirm that Jamie Ball is still very much in the lead and has improved upon her points total uh, coming into this competition. I would, uh, I would imagine that that would be the case. But did she do enough? 
to win this trophy. This is this is the more valuable one, the skier of the day, and it's voted on by you, you good water ski fans out there. And the go to water ski, go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play and vote for your skier of the day. And there's only one of those. It's not one for guys, one for girls. It's the one skier of the day. So it's go universal. vote. There we go, go vote for skier of the day, waterskibroadcaster.com forward slash play, where again the party started again and it's, yeah. uh, and it's for the men. Here's your Pro Tour standings about to come up on your screen right here and now. There it is, Jamie Ball, 164. She's, in, she's increased upon her point total. She is now 28 points ahead of Ali Nicholson. Uh, Patrizia Yanni has taken over third spot ahead of Ali Garcia, who uh, who is there at fourth place on 83. Regina Jaquist falls another spot to uh, 50 points. And those are your top five. Alicia Bagnoli, incidentally, in sixth place with 41 points. Ahead of Whitney McClintock, Rini, ahead of Neely Ross, Chelsea Mills, Rage Rini, Gina Kruger, and Sandra Bota. So those are your top runners in the uh, the Wolski Pro Tour. Yeah, there's, there's great skiing from all of those girls here today. You know, I'm really happy for Beatrice, you know, she really did put a score down and she's, she's overtaken Ali there to make the third spot hers on the Pro Tour. But look at this on the dock, you know, Jamie dancing around, she's happy. Yeah, she can relax now, she's done skiing for the weekend, just hang, letting it all hang loose. And look at this, it's just I've so never, unlike anything we've seen before. I've never seen Jamie like that at all. Yeah, you know, she's usually a very calm and collected person, but look, look at that. Uh, look, this is the Greek way, this is Greece. If you want to, I'm sure that this tournament is going to be happening next year. This is where you need to be. Yeah. All right, I think a major concern there for Jamie. Of uh, Jamie, uh, looking at the skier says, "Do not drop that thing." Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's just like, "Oh, it's like my baby. Don't, don't do it." So. All right then, we'll be back in just a few moments with the continuation of the 2022 Kai Afas Battle Pro right after these. Uh, morning, Brian. Hey, morning. You have a good weekend? Yeah, got out on the water a couple times. How about you? Yeah, I got to set in. Uh, just going to make a quick phone call here. Oh, of course. Can you get that, Will? I got it. Thanks for calling Wake House. This is Will. Uh, yeah, looks like we've got those in stock. On the internet nowadays and social media, there's bits and pieces about how to get better, but there was never a program that like tied everything together. I was looking for something I could do mainly on the off season so that when I started skiing in the spring, I didn't feel like I was hit by a truck. My mobility is better, I'm less sore. You know, I felt like I was a 50 year old that was closer to 60. Now I feel like I'm a 50 year old that's kind of closer to 40. <laughs> Try match play at bplayfield.com.
All right, then, welcome back to the 2022 Kayafas uh, Battle Pro. And uh, let's take a look at the leaderboard one more time for the women's competition before we go headlong into the men's uh, event. Jamie Bowie, winner with three, 10, 7, 5. One buoy back, uh, Ali Nicholson with two. Uh, Beatrice Yanni with three at 11.25 meters. And Alicia Bagnoli there with two and a half at 11.25 meters. Here is your... Uh, your list of skiers, George Hatzis, we believe will go first. Then we go with uh, Matteo Luzzeri, Nick Parsons, Filipos Kiprios, Jakob Onya, Corey Vaughan, Freddie Winter, Aaron Davies, Benjamin Stadelbauer, and Will Asher. Let's check in dockside with Lorenzo's land. Back to the dock, everybody. We just saw Jamie winning the event, and now we got the first guy on the water. We're here with Nick Parson. So, Nick, how are you feeling? How's the vibe out here today? I, I, I don't know if I should be doing drugs or drinking or skiing. I'm having an amazing time. This is delightful. <laughs> oh, perfect, perfect. We saw you also, you, taking a little break this morning. As Jamie said, did you feel that three rounds of quali? It's quite a lot, so you needed to keep a little rested for bringing out a big show in the final? Yeah, the water's hot, people are kind of skiing hard. Um, most, half the men seems like they took a break. Seemed, seemed like a good idea. All right, perfect. The boat is getting here, get your ski on. Best of luck and back to you, Tony. All right, then Lorenzo, and uh, just to my, the best of my understanding, George Ahatsis is not skiing in this championship round. Instead, Nick Parsons will take to the water first. He's got a little bit of catching up to do con comparing uh, his, uh, his scores in the first three rounds to the championship round. But if there's one skier who can dig down deep and come up with the goods, well, I wouldn't bet against Nick Parsons to do exactly that. So we'll see what he can do with, uh, with this fourth round, this championship round here at uh, Kafias. And uh, just a little bit of time to tell you about Wakehouse. You can find the products to suit your water sports needs by going to wakehouse.com. That is wakehouse.com, your online water sports pro shop. Certainly a great vibe. Oh, and yep, yeah, and uh, we're looking at Filipos Kiprios' hands. He'll be the next person out over after Nick Parsons and uh, that tape job certainly covering up the devastation that he inflicted upon himself on that left hand after his last uh, a set of slalom. Hence the reason why he didn't ski in the third round. All right, so Ian Keeley, Ian Keeling from the United States, he has won himself a Connolly slalom ski. Well done to you, sir. You've won yourself the Conley Slalom Ski of your choice, whether it be the Carbon V, the DV8, the GTR, the GT. You can choose from those skis. All right, so let's go dockside with Lorenzo. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're here with Filippo, our local boy, local hero, and next ski, uh, next gear in the water. So, Filippo, also for you, took a break this morning. How How's your back? It's okay. I think... It's going to be fine for today, and uh, I'm feeling good. I feel okay. All right, I see that you have a lot of support out on the shore on the other side of the lake. Do you feel excited about all this support that you're getting? It's nice, yes. It's definitely better than being on your own, you know, so it's nice. All right. Very nice event. A lot of people. All right, perfect. Thank you very much for the interview, Filippo. Get focused. Best of luck. And back to you, Tony. 
Thank you very much, Lorenzo. And just trying to get a sense for uh, for how uh, excited uh, Filipos Kiprios uh, is going into this event with a home crowd uh, uh, on his shoulders, on his back. Let's see what Nick Parsons can do on the opening pass of 13 meters, our first competitor out in the men's slalom final. It's looking good, he's looking in good shape. Using his tall figure is uncanny reach to get around all six buoys. At the helm of the towboat now is Nathan McGarry. Splendid job that he's done thus far. And long may that continue. Filipos Kiprios side. Looks like he's put some glove liners on to try and uh, get a little bit more grip and to protect his hands. So a lot of uh, a lot of things could potentially uh, work their work their way through. Filipos Kiprios getting a uh, some large large amount of. Uh, Large amount of uh, partisan support. As we ready, ready ourselves for Nick Parsons' uh, second pass. It's going to be on 12 meters. There's the remaining skiers on the start list. Eight skiers remain after the, uh, the person on the water. So the music starts to uh, to kick into high gear. I mean, the throng of people here is just absolutely out of this world. People on each side of the uh, the of the arena here, and they're all getting behind every single athlete out there that goes out on the water. Look at this; they certainly have a good appreciation for what's going on. As Nick Parsons. Slices and dices his way around all six buoys on this second run. He's gone through 13 and that was uh, 12. Hasn't uh, chosen to opt up yet, even though that there, there might have been one or two uh, reasons out there where he might. Uh, the, the wind is starting to gust up a little bit, not as much as yesterday, mind you, at this stage, but there is there is that possibility for uh, for Nick Parsons as we see uh, some elements of our crowd young and old from all across the local area they've come from uh, from many many points along the western Peloponnesian coast right here in Greece I'm Tony Lightfoot and I'll be joined in a, in a short bit uh, by uh, by Beatriz Yani and also by Annie Nicholson, who are doing an absolutely uh, stellar job here with uh, with their analysis uh, during the men's slalom event. We'll get them back shortly. In the meantime, just look just look at this. I mean, you you don't see this anywhere else in the world. Here we go. Nick Parsons, 11.25. Nicely done, keeps the ski out ahead of him, the ski of his choice, his own ski. All right, so looking at that uh, from, uh, from Nick Parsons, 11.25 meters, and uh, taking a look at this one, just nice glide into the turn, just moving very, very smooth, very, very precisely to, in order to get the right amount of angle to maintain enough cross-course speed and cross-course traction. Just has that ease about him, considering he's over six feet four, uh, it would, that wouldn't surprise me, but almost, uh, almost stuffed the tip going into number uh, Number five, but he knew exactly what he was doing. And a scintillated effort there, courtesy of Nick Parsons. Now, those of you that tried to join us earlier for the third round, uh, unfortunately, uh, our, uh, our upstreaming capabilities were, were compromised. And, uh, and even now, we are, 
we are at a little bit of a disadvantage when it comes to uh, a straight up uh, uploading speed. We apologize for this and we are recording uh, this action as a contingency just in case and we have recorded round three in case you want to go back and watch that, those performances there. So there we go, this is Nick Parsons at 10.75 meters. Oh, oh, brought the handle up, he's on his back foot and down he goes. It's gonna be two and a half, that's gonna set the stall out for our remaining skiers. Two and a half at 10.75 meters for Nick Parsons. And right here, uh, things didn't look too bad. Even going into number three, they weren't, uh, they weren't particularly uh, going sideways, but then rocked up onto the back. He uh, compounded that by bringing the handle up high. And unfortunately, is in the drink, having scored two and a half at 10.75 meters. Nick Parsons from Bountiful in Utah. So whilst Nick Parsons uh, swims in, he'll occupy the uh, the hot seat or the hot sofa, as they call it, and ri and rode on that uh, that pineapple ski of his own design and own manufacture. And contrary to popular belief, he doesn't use his dad's uh, bakery ovens to uh, to make those skis. They're actually made in Calgary, in Canada. So Philippos Kiprios. And there is Nick Parsons. I'm sure he's disappointed with his score, but he's taken in the vibe of this place. Joyous occasion here at uh, Caiaphas for the for the Battle Pro. Let's check in dockside with Lorenzo. All right, Nick, you just got done skiing as we sit down on your leader's couch. So how was it out there? You know, today was by far my best feeling on the course here. I had been adjusting my ski throughout this whole weekend, trying to sort some things out. And that was by far the earliest, most swing I've had all weekend. And I blew it, I blew it right there at three, I don't know. What, hap what happened out there at three? I don't know, I, I was very, I got over there with plenty of space and time. I just kind of hung back a little bit, and then I was out of rhythm. Or so. I, I'm, I don't know. Well, we're sorry to see you going down so early at 10:7. Hope you had a good time here in Greece. Thank you for coming, and back to you, Tony. Okay, and check in. Go vote for skier of the day. Has, uh, has Nick Parsons uh, done enough for you? Go vote for Skier of the Day by going to wardskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. Five star event on the Wardski Pro Tour. The highest you can get. Brilliant event here. Good, a good atmosphere, great crowd. And I'm sure that that crowd is going to get behind a Philippos Kyprios, our sole athlete from Greece in this state, in this uh, championship round. There in the back, uh, off behind the scenes, we had uh, Vincent Stadelbauer, Licia Bagnoli, and also our uh, gate, our, uh, our replay official. And there you see the, uh, the graphic there explaining the zero off in terms of response and intensity of response. give you a better idea of what those letters and numbers are all about.
And there we saw on Dockside there, uh, Corey Vaughan getting ready for his turn. He'll be next up after uh, Filipos Kiprios. Speaking of which, here he comes. 30 meters. Entrance gates around buoy number one. He's working his way neatly through this pass of 30 meters and at the same time he's trying to make sure that he doesn't do too much harm to his left hand that is uh, severely taped up. Let's check in dockside with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're here with Corey, our next gear in the water. So Corey, how are you feeling? I feel good. Uh, they've got the vibe right here. This is the Caiaphas battle and uh, I'm ready to go do battle. All right, perfect. We're seeing that the conditions are just perfect right now. So what's your plan for the final? Yeah, just everything straight up, uh, 13 meters start, try to feel the boat pass by pass and uh, ski for as long as I can. All right, perfect. We're going to let you get focused. Best of luck and back to you, Tony. Fantastic stuff there, and hey, I've got uh, Beatrice. Hello. Oh, thank you. Yes, we got some protein drinks here. We got, I've got strawberry. You've got uh, vanilla. Cheers. Cheers. We'll open that in a moment. But what was that atmosphere like for you, Beatrice? It, it, it was, it was crazy. It was like it was so much fun. Yeah, like at first I was like, this is weird, and then I just. You just, you just let it go. Yeah, I let it go, you know. It was it was fun. Like they know how to have fun and I knew it. So yeah, it was great actually. Alright then, so got a lot of uh, skiing uh, coming our way. We've got Philippos Kiprios. Now I don't know whether you saw his left hand or uh, Beatrice here. But uh, it looks it looked really, really uh, taped up. He's working hard to try and preserve it with the opening couple of passes to make sure he has enough grip strength come 11.25 meters and beyond. Yeah, I think so, because of his back. So I think he's taking it easy for these first passes and then going for it for the next ones. Right, you are. And uh, taking a look at Corey Vaughan, Dockside. and uh, Yeah, and uh, just just really really feeling it out there yeah i mean this music this 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 atmosphere it's, it's, a, it's a great vibe yeah and it's uh, been a while since uh, the, the Caiaphas battle pro has uh, taken place i don't know whether you you were even skiing in that event in in 2005 but uh, it is certainly uh, i wasn't i wasn't my cousin fabio was here yeah your cousin fabio was here so uh so yeah, I mean, he he he, uh, he probably uh, reveled in this kind of atmosphere. But I tell you what, this is just something else. Yeah, like literally something else. Everybody's so like into it. Everybody's is cheering for us. It's it's nice, you know. Like on the dock, everybody's there, you know. It's nice, very nice. All right, here we go. We've got Philippos Kiprios. We're going to take a look at down the opposite side of the lake and pick him up for what was it? Was it going to be 11.25 yeah. meters? We'll see how much intensity he can offer against the boat. Rather pensive look in there, Corey Vaughan. You're enjoying the music, I can see that. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm getting with it, you know. Yeah. I may be old, but I'm not ancient. <laughs> just Corey, just trying to get settled in, and I uh, don't know what's. Oh, here we go now. Now we've got Philippos Kiprios, 11.25 meters, approaching the course. Let's see what he's got. Entrance number one, little slip. Oh, this is 10.75 meters. He's opted up. He's definitely, he's going for broke here. Look at him go, he's round number four. He's going for number five. Oh my word. The second opt up yeah. through 11.25 meters in this tournament so far. And it comes through, comes that, up. That was great because we were, we were expecting 11, you know? Oh wow. Now it's game on. It is, it is. And, and he waited until this round to come yeah. up with something like that. Yeah, I think it was it was good for him like, to not ski 
the other two rounds, just preserving his back for these. It almost looked like for a moment that that that, that may have been a, been a gamble that could have cost him right there into yeah. three into four. And even there, he safety checked on number five. It wasn't yeah. going to be a guarantee, but he managed to get round number six at 10 7 yeah. 5. Wow. Yes. And he throws the fist. And this Greek crowd, if they weren't behind him before, they're definitely going to get behind him now. Yeah. yeah. Ali, what's up? Hello, hello. You arrived at, an, at a good moment. At a what? You arrived at a good moment. Oh, yeah, exciting stuff. I saw him walking, making my way back down here. Yes, indeed. Filipos Kiprios opted up through 11-2-5 through and uh, cleared 10 7 5, which means now he's. His season's best score is 2 at 41. Let's see what kind of start he gets. I think he's in that pain-free zone right now. Let's have a look. Round number one. Does he get outside number two? Not quite. But he does set the bar now. One at 10.25 meters. It might be enough. You just never know. So he took the risk doing the opt out, taking the 10 7 from the other direction and seemed to work in his favor. So we'll see what we see the others do from here on out. Yeah. Indeed. And just look at that number one. Too much slack. Just not enough room to get outside number two. A little bit annoyed with that, uh, considering what, what it took to get through a 10.75, the Herculean effort involved. But I tell you what. Is that enough for skier of the day? Go vote now. Waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. Waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. And uh, is that enough to uh, to secure him enough votes for skier of the day? Wow. All right, let's continue on. And as we uh, go on to our next skier, let me tell you about Hope Lake Ski Club. They cancel winter with coaches such as uh, Vim De Cray and, and created by Ed Hickey, close to Jupiter, South Florida. Yes, indeed, you can cancel winter. Hope Lake Ski Club, check it out, Hope Lake Ski Club online. All right, working our way towards our uh, second half of this list and just look at Filipos Kiprios some measures happy by getting through 11.25 meters uh, going through 10.75 meters on the opt up but then still a little annoyed that he didn't get far enough down on 10.25 to really put the pressure on the skiers to come yeah he's definitely going to wish that he had gotten a little bit more there to put up a, a slightly bigger score for him yeah. Let's check in Dockside. All right, Filippo, come over here. Are we live? All right, as we just saw Nick get thrown in the water and Filippo getting his seat on the leader's couch. Let's go on the couch. Let's go on the couch. So, Filippos. How was the build-up to this race? We saw you building, building up the scores. How did you feel out there today? Annoyed. I felt nice until 10 to 5, but then I messed up the setup at the end. And, uh, you know, it's not very fun, but anyway, the next time. All right, thank you very much, Filippo. Enjoy your couch for now, and back to you, Tony. All right then, and uh, skiing with that Lapointe ski. How long does he get to sit in that uh, that couch for? How long does he have his hands on that trophy? We'll find out in the next few minutes as we get uh, Corey Vaughan into the uh, the slalom course for his uh, opening pass. And and I mean, Ali, I mean, the atmosphere. You, you you're not used to any of this, are you? The atmosphere here in this competition is just completely, completely shatters everything that you've seen on experience so far, hasn't it, Ali? Oh yeah, it's definitely been unreal. I think we have another uh, dockside interview with Lorenzo's Lands. Let's go check in with them. Let's check it out. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're here with Freddie Winter, who just get, he was just getting ready for his final round. How do you feel, Freddie? Uh, have you ever seen anything like this at a ski tournament? 
This yeah. hasn't happened before. I mean, I'm sure the webcast doing a great job of showing what's going on. We've got music, we've got DJs. It's like a thousand people here on the dock even. This is unbelievable. I mean, like there's a million sports where you'll hear like, oh, the crowd got behind me, the crowd jazzed me up. You hear that in tennis the whole time. This is unbelievable. I got to say, George is doing an incredible job. Uh, so excited to be here. It's kind of, it's getting us all amped up. I've had a, you know, rough week not skiing. You know, it's, it's hard, but this is kind of getting me going. I'm not feeling anything right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go big. All right, perfect. We hope to see you go very, very big. Best of luck. And back to you, Tony. All right. Back on the water, we got Corey Vaughn. Who got, in, got himself into a little bit of a tight spot in the last two rounds, but hopefully he can settle in himself and his nerves down with a, a, a nice, smooth-looking 30-meter pass to get things are going, Bayer. Yeah, I think it's gonna... I mean, earlier we were, we were talking and he said he wanted to see himself on his ski. He was skiing, so... I think now he's all set and ready for the final. Right you are, and... Uh, and uh, be uh, be checking out beplayfuel.com, beplayfuel.com. Uh, uh, check out the uh, the pairings and the matches that the, are going on the right webcast. now. This is and, it's uh, unbelievable. And once like, again, I've been may to I suggest every another tournament there is in water skiing. I really have. And, the girls I mean, the only thing that could the rival it is... So far as the, an the, the analyst team is concerned, do you reckon the girls do it best? Or do the guys analyze slalom skiing a lot better than the others? Check it out. Go to bplayfuel.com. Bplayfuel.com. I'm Tony Lightfoot. She is Ali Nicholson. And she is Beatrice Yanni. And just, just look at it there. The couch. Philippos Kiprios. Will he, will he stay there for a while? Like he's trying to find find somewhere else to go at the moment. He's uh, not not the uh, not the not the most uh, uh, well. Anyway, uh, that's that's another point for another time. Here we go. This is uh, Corey Vaughn. This is 12 meters. Ooh. Seems to be having a bit of a hard time with that yeah. that even side. So not looking too bad on the pass number one or pass number two. So he's gone through 13 and 12. There's uh, Philippos uh, uh, keeping, uh, just trying to keep his nerves in check, as well as uh, uh, Corey Vaughan as well, and he's trying to uh, make sure that everything is still uh, moving forwards in the right way. As we see Freddie Winter uh, getting ready for his go. There are dancing girls over there. So up next we have uh, Corey Vaughn coming in at 11. Uh, this pass has actually given him a little bit of a hard time. Uh, we saw him fall early yesterday and he kind of battled through it in the, the previous round today. Yeah. He, he got actually four at 10.75 meters as his eventual score, but you are right, I mean, he's. He struggled a little bit. He got one and a half at 11 in the first round. He got to one and a half at 10.75 in the second round. And uh, slowly but surely finding his feet here. Let's see if he can conjure up something that will be high echelon type, type stuff. 11.25, third pass. All handle up high, not the best of starts. He's round buoy number two. Can't afford to make too many more of those mistakes if he expects to run. 11.25 meters, he gets it to go. And there you go, six buoys. A horrid start, but a splendid finish. Yeah, he's really getting on the back of the ski there, like I said, on that 2-4 side. Um, I have a feeling it's gonna catch him here at this next pass. Uh, Hopefully he can get up over his feet a little bit better and uh, make it through and uh, put some pressure on the leaderboard. What say you, Bayer? Yeah, I totally agree. Like he was, I don't know if it's taking it in, like, um, I don't know what to say. Like it's, it's a bit worried about that, about that, that ball. So it's just, it's just waiting for maybe too much, waiting too much, and then on the on the back of the ski. He doesn't appear 100% comfortable. That's that's the, that's the the sense and the feeling that I'm getting watching his skiing right now. But he's through 11.25 meters and. Looking for a decent score round on deep on 
He hasn't run 10.75 yet, but now would be a good, good opportunity for him to, uh, to ski like he typically skis and get through that run in order to put the heat on someone like Freddie Winter, who is getting ready to take the water right now. Yeah, we're seeing Freddie a little bit earlier than what we're used to, uh, but he's got a tie for that third spot um, score, but his backup scores put him out first, so, um, or lack of backup scores, I should say. Right you are, here we go. This is a Corey Vaughn, 10.75 meters, has not run this pass in the entirety of this tournament in the three rounds that we've had. But I'll tell you what, he's broken over at the waist, he's still there and he's out of it on three. That means that Filipos Kiprios gets to sit in that seat for a little while longer as Corey Vaughn slips into second place ahead of uh, and a Nick Parsons with the with that score of two and a half. But let's take a look at this again, Ali. I mean, this is just not the start he's looking for. He's getting that handle high every time out of 135. And then he just looks to me like he's really moving back on the ski there. It gets pulled out going to three. And yeah, just... He's just pulling the handle like really high. It's not waiting the, the rope. It just looks like he's losing the line a little bit there on the back side of the buoy and having to kind of pull it high to, to take up the slack. So yeah. very unfortunate. Uh, not the score that Corey was looking for this weekend, but um, up next we have Freddie Winter. Yes, indeed. And if one skier can conjure up some magic here in uh, in, a, in, a, in a country where he spent much of his uh, formative existence within the sport of tournament water skiing, Freddie Winter, it may be that person who could come through in the clutch. However, coming into this event, he missed out on San Gervasio uh, due to a back injury. Uh, so uh, looking to, to see if he can go into that pain-free zone and conjure up something that would uh, really put uh, the heat on the likes of Ashley. There we go, trying to pump up the crowd a little bit. Yeah, he's, he's wanting to get some, uh, get some encouragement. Continue to vote for skier of the day. Waterski and waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play for that. Also go to beplayfuel.com. Another great event which will be happening uh, towards the end of the season on October 7th and 8th. Also broadcast by TWBC is the Travis Grand Prix. Get your entry quick for this unique event featuring shooting, go-karting and slalom. It's the Travis Grand Prix and it is on October the 7th and 8th and broadcast live on TWBC. So. Let's go Dockside. All right, we were here with Matteo just a second ago. We just jumped in the water to get a little refreshment. So, Matteo, how are you feeling? How's the vibe now? Ah, it's uh, pretty damn good. I mean, everyone is here ready to watch. There's a big score already up, uh, so I'm midway through. I'm going to try my best to beat it. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. We saw you put it up, a very good score. Solid score in round, in round three, so we hope to see you do the same, if not best. Best of luck, Matteo, and back to you, Tony. Thank you very much. Two Italians right there who represented the University of Louisiana uh, many, many moons ago and uh, reunited here at uh, uh, Caiaphas for the, uh, for the battle. And there we go, we got Filipos Kiprios still occupying the, uh, the hot seat. Just doing a brilliant, brilliant job so far. This organization, they've got the people here. They've got the crowds. They've got a hype and a vibe that I have never, ever seen before in a tournament that I've been involved with on the announcing point. This is a, yeah, quite the experience here. Definitely a different mindset standing on the dock. It's not quite as uh, serious. It's a lot more lighthearted and fun. And it's uh, very, yeah, it's very different, very fun as a first year. Um, I think uh, George has done a great job with this event. Nicely done. Round all six buoys. Good, good effort there from Freddie Winter. And great, great skiing. I mean, I mean, he missed out two rounds, didn't he? He didn't ski round two or three. So it just rested up his back and just, I guess he took a few ibuprofen to try and uh, uh, take down the pain. Yep. 
So nicely done. Yeah, Freddie looks good here. I mean, hopefully those two rounds off are uh, exactly what he needed, and he's ready and strong for this last round. What do you say, Bea? Yeah, like just like uh, Filippo Skipper, he did. They stop for uh, the two rounds just to rest their back. And yeah, they, they look pretty solid now. In some ways, you can actually ease your, ease your way through a pass on 13, on 13 meters. So. Yeah, I mean, I feel like sometimes we tend to, to take the early passes a little too easy at times. So you gotta, you gotta start going and get going and uh, try to try to hit the ground running as quickly as you can so that you're ready to build for those those uh, harder passes. I'm just wondering how easy he can take something like 12 meters, though, because I mean, any 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 kind of strength that you can save, any kind of effort you can save on that pass, definitely means you can apply that effort onto something a little bit harder. I just wonder how much Freddie Winter can back down and still run 12 meters. I'd say Freddie can run 12 meters on a plank of wood if he tried. So <laughs> I agree. Maybe we'll see him do that in the future. Here we go. This is 12 meters. Good, good start. Easy pass for him. I like his effort out there. Yeah, Freddie's looking really solid, keeping that line tight all the way through. Got him broken yeah. over off five though, but he's still good though. Yeah. That's a great looking uh, yeah. pass. And now it comes down to 11.25 meters, or does it? Because Filipos Kiprios to get to where he's sitting right now, he opted up through 11.25 meters and cleared 10.75 meters to put him onto 10.25. Freddie might surprise us here. Um, I would say probably with that back, he's probably wanting to ease into those hard passes as much as he can. I mean, maybe he's wanting to skip that pass and just get it over with, we'll see. Um, I would say we're gonna see Freddie come back at 11 though. Yeah, kind of decision that Sometimes, sometimes between the devil and the deep blue sea, right? I mean, it's just, just one of those things. And uh, and they are here at the at the five star event. I mean, the vibe here, a fantastic. I can it's see it's a five star vibe. Okay. Yeah, it is a five star vibe. I can see you nodding your head a little bit. Even, yeah, even I'm getting I am. Into it a I'm having bit. so much fun. Please. There, uh, Matteo just trying to uh, get uh, get psyched up. A doctor in psychology, sports psychology. So he knows how to deal with uh, stuff like this. And they're just Filipos <laughs> Kiprios just chugging, chugging back a coat. <laughs> that, that is two contrasts right there in the same shot. Here we go. This is Freddie Winter. This is 11.25 meters. Not going with the opt up here. Yeah, I don't, I don't find that that surprising. Um, if I were him, I would say I would be wanting to kind of ease in. But, uh, Still looking good and making easy work at this 11, yeah. 11 to 5 pass. Very light. Oli is uh, really, uh, realistically, Oli is second or third set back after injuring his back, which he uh, which he sustained while he was trying to move some furniture. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, looking at Freddie Winter right now, doesn't seem to have lost a beat or a step. I like the way he edge changes, comes across the wake and trying to like steps down with some good knee bend and just anchors that inside edge into his uh, pre-turn there, Ali. And it's something, something that we would all like to emulate. I mean, he looks he looks really good and really solid edge changes. Um, you know, got picture perfect there. So, um, but that's what makes Freddie one of the best in the business here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, former world slalom champion, got that title in 2017 in Paris, France and has been a, one of the more consistent in uh, performers, even going back to 2013, where he won the uh, the bronze medal in the World Slalom Championship in Santiago de Chile. He's been either close to the po podium or on it ever since that occasion there in, in November of 2013. All right, let's have a look and see. This is 10.75 meters, a pass that he needs to run to get within shot, within spinning distance of Filipos Kiprios. Look at him go, he's round buoy number two. He's halfway down the course now on number three. Strikes number four. There we go. 
This was a great N75, one of the best we've seen. Fantastic. All right then, so now within a third of a pass worth of buoys within that score of Philippos Kyprios. Question is, will he be able to get there? But he certainly has a good shot at it based upon how he cleared 10.75 there, Abea. Yeah, I would say that he made pretty easy work of that 10.7 here, and he's going to have his sights set for uh, more than just surpassing that one. Um, he's going to be looking to go down and, and put up the big score to, to put the pressure on, on the rest of the skiers on the dock. Right, you are, and uh, taking that big hit off number five. You know, a lot of, a lot of what you see on the water with slant, on slant and skin, you could be forgiven for saying that it's technique. Not the, not the complete picture. You have to be conditioned. You have yeah. to work in the off season to be able to take those hits off buoy number five and still come out the other side, not looking like a pretzel. Yeah, that's true. So now, Philippos Kiprios on one buoy at 10.25 meters. A sniff of that ski going outside number two will be enough to take, for him to take the lead. But he's very, he's very, very conscious of the fact that there are skiers that are going to go after him, that are capable of getting that score, if not more. Here we go, Freddie Winter, round number one. And the two, wow. he's in the lead. He's round wow. number four oh, and he gets the three. Three boys. Yes. Is that gonna be enough, we wonder? He thinks it is. He thinks he'll keep him in contention, but will it be enough for the win? Yeah, it's a full three buoys there. That that does tie the second best score of the weekend. weekend so yeah. we'll see. Um, hopefully the men following can put up some big scores and uh, give us a show here. Yeah, that score of three at 10.25 meters only performed by one other person in this event, and that was Aaron Davies, uh, uh, Bea. But uh, yeah. you kind of get the sense that this was planned. He didn't he didn't plan on actually running the, the complete pass, I just mean, getting deep enough to go halfway. I think so. I mean, I, I saw like the, the gate was great. Even the first ball was was actually really good. And then I don't know. I feel I feel like not that he stopped because it's ten to five. It's not that easy. But still, I think he could have gone like farther if he tried. Taking that turn almost as if it were number six. Yeah. So there you go, that, we're going to uh, check in on Dockside with Lorenzo. All right, everybody, we just saw Filippo leaving the leader's couch and we're welcoming to the leader's couch our new top score. Freddy Winter with an amazing score of 3 at 10 to 5. How did you feel out there, Freddy? It's not better today than yesterday. I don't know about an amazing score, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll happily take it. It's been a rubbish month. Month and a half. I'm so happy to be skiing again. I'm so happy to be in the mix. And uh, I don't know if it'll be enough, maybe not, but I'll, uh, I'm being guided very well here, sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it'll be enough. But I'm happy to be in the mix and I'm happy to be back skiing and this is what I love doing. I love this is the thing I love the very most in the whole world and I'm very happy to be able to do this as you know week in, week out. We've got great tournaments here in Europe. This might be the best one ever, honestly. So let's uh yeah, I mean whatever happens, it's been one of the best weeks I've ever had in pro skiing ever. So I'm happy to have a decent score. Might not stand up, but I'm happy to be back. Well, we will know if it will stand up or not at the end of this tournament, but thank you very much. It's been a pleasure seeing you ski again in the pro event. Hope your back is going to be better and better every day from now on. Thanks again for being here in Kayafas, and back to you, Tony. Fantastic effort there from Freddie Winter. Uh, earned is a spot on the couch with a score of three at 10.25 meters. I've got uh, Beatrizia Yani on my left and Ali Nicholson on my right. Switch them around uh, to, uh, to get the view on the screen. 
We've got uh, four competitors to go after the current skier on the water right now, which is Matteo Luzzeri. And it's already building up to a crescendo now with the, the men's slalom final. Make sure you still vote for Skier of the Day, waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. And also uh, participate in bplayfuel.com, bplayfuel.com. Also check out Waters Wetsuits, designed and created by Brandon Waters. Jumpsuits for the more discerning water ski jumper. Go to waterswetsuits.com, that is waterswetsuits.com. Matteo Lazzari, go Ali. So interesting to see he is starting at that 13 meter line again, um, which is kind of what I expected after the last round. He did the 13 meter start and uh, it seemed to work in his favor. So I expected to see him come back out at the same here in the final. And it uh, looks like that is what he has chosen to do. Um, let's go check in with Lorenzo's land on the dock. Absolutely. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're here with our next competitor in the water. So. How is this feeling? How is this music? How is everything out here today? I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I, I just love seeing how everyone is having a great time. I'm having a great time. All the people here, all the... Yeah, everyone's just doing a great job and have, enjoying themselves. So, all right. So. All right. Let's talk, about a let's talk a little bit about your tournament coming up. So, did you rest? Uh, did you get ready? Did you focus properly for the, the, for the final round? Yeah, I just went into the AC, relaxed a little bit, focused about my skiing a little bit, and now just went out here to the crazy music, crazy people, and just smash it. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. Best of luck, and back to you, Tony. All right, continuing right along. This is the biggest event of the season. This is a five-star event on the Water Ski Pro Tour. They're all chasing after some serious cash here at uh, the, uh, the Kai Afras Battle. Great, great skiing from uh, from all of our athletes in this competition, and now we're building up to the uh, the grand finale. As we see, Matteo Luzzeri, 12 meters. He started on 13. He ran that. He's had it. It's not hasn't been without its challenges in this event. But let's have a look and see. I think Matteo's looking really solid here. Uh, we've seen him kind of have some rough starts uh, than the previous rounds, and I think that uh, he's looking pretty pretty solid and calm and ready uh, ready for the shorter lines here. And you, Abea, are familiar with him to the extent that you uh, share the same nationality. What do you see here from uh, from Matteo? Well, I know Matteo since we were kids, and he's always been a solid here. This year is is pretty like intense, like it's pretty into it, and I see he's skiing ready very well. So yeah, it's too bad for the first two rounds, but you know the final is what it, it counts, you know. So we'll see how it goes. I don't think, uh, knowing, knowing, knowing Matteo as well as I do, that he intentionally held back. But he's coming he's coming through at the right time, do you go agree? Yeah. Certainly. All right then, short and very succinct answer there by, uh, by Pedro Tiajani. Uh, let's have a look at the leaderboard, shall we? Uh, Freddie Winter in the lead, halfway down, 10 to 5. Filipos Kiprios, one at 10.25 meters. The only competitors that have gone through 10.75 meters thus far in this final round. So whilst our local announcing outfit uh, interviews uh, Jacobonia, well, let's, uh, let's bring in Matteo Luzzeri on pass number three. It should be 11.25 meters. Let's see what he can key in on. Looking good. Fantastic there on buoy number two. 11.25 meters shouldn't be too much of a problem. Although uh, getting in a little bit deep on a couple of these turns, but he's able to survive and get through that pass. I'm sure he'll want to take a little bit of time for self-analysis, but he can't afford that to do that quickly because he only has about 50 seconds to, to figure out what went wrong in this pass and to correct it in time for 10.75. Let's see at the replay, because... I thought he had a nice gate there. Yeah. Uh, the start was pretty good. Um, got a little, I think it was four ball. The switch rope kind of threw me off. I saw the, the bit of extra line at the where the switch connects pop up, and I thought we lost him here at four. Yeah. Um, I don't think it looks as bad from that view. Um, so we'll see Mateo come back here at 10-7 in just a second. Yeah. Looking in good shape for the most part, that is uh, Matteo Luzzeri. 
out of San Gervasio Bresciano in uh, northern Italy in the Lombardy region. Organized the uh, the previous stop to the uh, to the Pro Tour, the San Gervasio Pro Am. Presented presented a very very good tournament there. All right, so this is the must-run pass yeah. to get a shot at the leaderboard. Let's see if we can get a good start here. Looking good, round buoy number one. Needs to get through this run to uh, to really put a firm challenge up against Freddie Wintour. Look at that. On, good transition off number three. He ain't going to go down without a fight. Look at this. Matteo, yeah. let's say, yeah, that's more like it. That was a sort of a battle. You know, like, that was yeah. a bit of a battle, yeah. From, I thought kind of from the start, uh, his edge change into one looked a little strange to me. Yeah. Um, and he definitely had to fight to get all six there. Um, but definitely happy to see him get through it. Looking good off the first couple of turns. Things started to get a little bit sideways as he came off number yeah. three. If we look at it here. Ski a little bit behind him. I thought he was going to take a dive into buoy number four, but I tell you what, and even going into number five, but he steadied himself up, backed off. The ski came under him beautifully off number five. He got round number six. Tremendous effort to get through that yeah. pass, and doesn't he know it? He did a great job, actually. Great job. All right, Ali. 10.25 meters. It's going to take halfway down that pass for uh, for Matteo to at least tie with yep. Freddie Winter. Yeah, so looking here at the leaderboard, we got Freddie at, we have Freddie at uh, two, at three, and then uh, Filippos is sitting with the one at 10.25 here. Uh, season's best for Matteo was in the previous round with two at 10.25. So let's see if he can better that season's best. He's coming through, he's coming through at the right time. Currently 20th on the Pro Tour standings list. Season's best, two at 10, two five. Can he get more than that? Entrance gates, buoy number one. He, get, he has a chance. He's round buoy number two. Does he get outside? Oh, he doesn't make it. A little annoyed with himself, but he gets two. Doesn't put him on the couch, but it does put him in contention for one of the uh, the top prizes in this event. Yeah, I mean, I know Mateo is going to be a little bit frustrated there. He was so close to being outside three. Um, but to, to get your season's best and then tie it the next round, I think he will be pretty happy with his performance overall today. Yeah, I mean, he actually had a, a first, first ball, a pretty good first ball, but... You know, like the gate, he did the same thing that he did yesterday. He did that, he did that, that extra, that little extra yeah. lean right before yeah. he turns. So, yeah, I thought he actually, I thought he had a great one here. Um, I thought that was really the one ball to get over to that three, and I mean, yeah. he was just inside it. So, um, phenomenal skiing, regardless yeah. from Mateo. Really good result, bravo. Yeah, tried his best to get outside number three, annoyed with himself that he couldn't do so. But I uh, think upon reflection, the last these last two rounds, certainly the best that uh, Matteo has uh, yeah. put out there. Obviously searching for a lot more than that in the in in like the harsh the harsh wind of daytime. But you know, this th it comes down to inches, you know. You, you, you get you get, get a decent turn off number one. You're slightly behind on two, and that's all it takes. Yeah, I mean, you can have the best one and get over to two. I mean, I I did that earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Had a great one, and I just I couldn't pull it together there at two balls. So um, yeah, I know Mateo's going to be a little frustrated there, but he I mean he really got pulled out there at two. I think he honestly did pretty good to hold on to it and to get as close to three as he did. Yeah. All right, now we're down to our last four competitors. We'll have Benjamin Stadelbau, Aaron Davies, and Will Asher to come in just a few cool. minutes. But before then, it's going to be Sweden's Jakob Bonja. And uh, if you've seen anything among our performances uh, so far that has earned your vote for Skier of the Day, go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play to vote for your Skier of the Day. Waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play to vote for your skier of the day. Let's go dockside and check in with Lorenzo's land. Welcome back to the dock. We're here with Matteo. Just got done skiing. Unfortunately, a little short of the lead. So, Matteo, 
Tell us what happened out there. That one ball at 10 to 5 looked pretty good. Yeah, it was even better than this morning, honestly. And then I got shoulder forward into two. I still decided to commit to my turn, but I was ahead of the boat. So by the time the pull came, he squashed me. And I didn't really have a shot to get three, but not too displeased with this, to be honest. Now, you did, you did good. You did pull up two good scores on the board today. And today, both of them, actually. So we're really happy to see you here. We're really happy to get you ski that consistent. And thank you very much again for being here. Back to you, Tony. Wow, and uh, from, from someone who was even contemplating not skiing the, uh, the third round uh, in, the, uh, in, in today's competition. I mean, the la last night I saw, I saw him, he was a figure of despondency after the first two rounds. And then he just pulled it all together for the third round and the, and the championship round. And Matteo Lazzari, you know, I mean, he must take some confidence away from this, from this competition, Bayer and Ali. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yesterday was, of course, he wasn't happy with his score. I think he slept over it, you know, that was, he thought about it. And this morning he was like, okay, I have to go for it. Yeah, get after it. Yeah, I know, it's kind of, so now it's kind of hard to recover from that, the first day, but I think you have to, you know, sleep it off and shake it off and come back and treat today as a new day. And I think that that's exactly what Mateo did. And I think he'll be overall very uh, pleased with his performance today um, in both rounds. Well, with a nod to another. T okay, let's check in on Dockside with uh, with Lorenzo. Welcome, welcome back, back to the dock. We're here with Benny Sauer, our next gear in the water. water. So, so Benny, how are you, are you feeling today? today? Yeah, good. Yeah, this good. is this the is final round. round. Everyone, Everyone been 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 skiing been. really well. Uh, we're here in Greece. Beautiful country. Kayafas is great. Thanks a lot, George. You've put a hell of a party together. Okay, so right now the leaderboard stands: Freddy with three at ten to five, Matteo with two, and Filippo with one. What do you think? Yeah, all these guys uh, left their best skiing for last and uh, hopefully I can do the same, you know? All right, perfect. We really hope that you can do the same as well. Best of luck and back to you, Tony. Why, thank you very much and uh, some great, great skiing all the way through at this time. So I'll tell you what, we're here at the uh, Caiaphas uh, Battle for 2022. I've got uh, Ali Nicholson here uh, to my right and uh, Beatrice Iani uh, to my left. We're witnessing some absolutely outstanding performances ever, really, in the Water Ski Pro Tour in its, in its young existence. Here we go. This is Jakobonia. This is 12 meters. 12 meters live. Oh, oh no, and he got oh when he oh my word. Don't know what the heck happened there. I tell you what, I, I looked down for just a second. I, I didn't see it. We'll have to watch it again Let's on replay. replay. That was very uncharacteristic for Jakob. Very, very uncharacteristic. He got the turn that he needed off buoy number one. Benjamin Nicely done round buoy number two. And I mean, for the first two thirds of this pass, you would ju you you would just say to yourself, "Okay, he's got this. Let's move on." But that this is a timely reminder that slalom skiing, even at its best, is unpredictable. I think there is something. There was something wrong with his binding. I mean, there is no that. No I, other I, I actually thing. see a loose clip on his binding on his front binding. By, by now, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is no explanation. We'll, uh, we'll have to wait until he swims in and get a, a dockside interview with Lorenzo and see what uh, what Jakob thinks thinks about just what because happened. yesterday when he fell and we went back to the hotel he showed me the ski and there was something like loose on the on the reflex binding so i don't know Could be. indeed so now we're moving on from uh, from yakabonia rather earlier than it than uh, expected we're now going to go on to uh, to benjamin stadelbauer let's go benjamin All right, Benjamin Stadelbauer out of Geneva in Switzerland. His stock is improving every, very, very slightly, slowly but surely. So, quite a few of these uh, competitors have run 39 and a half or 10.75 meters. In fact, one, two, three of them so far have 
The rest of Aviva run into 10.75 meters, with the one exception being Jakob Onya with 5 on 12. So that's the 10 of the tape so far. And Benjamin Stadelbau looking to make his mark here. Could it be enough for a podium finish or even for the win? Let's check in Dockside with uh, Enzo's land. All right, welcome back to the dog with you and Aaron, ready to ski. He's just been done dancing. How are you feeling right now, buddy? Oh my God, it's so I'm so pumped right now. Like, I mean, if someone had said you're gonna be second second seed, I'd be like, nah, no way. Uh, but it's, it's, I'm here right now, and this everyone here is amazing. Uh, it's such an amazing vibe right now. Just so chill. There's not, you know, thinking about the skiing, but the mind's off the skiing. It's like, oh, we're having fun, you know, and then just just get the job done on the water. All right, perfect person. There is already a few big scores on the board. Are you afraid about those scores at all? I'm just going to do what I can do, you know. I, I mean, I put down my score. I'm a happy guy this weekend. You know, to get up, you know, to get up there with the big guys, it's, it's, it's an honor. And, but I'm just going to do what I do best, and, and uh, we'll see, see where that puts me. All right, perfect. We hope to see you doing your best of the best of the best. Best of luck and back to you, Tony. All right, Aaron Davies getting ready to go. And so, Aaron Davies, who actually got off to an impressive start uh, with two at 10.25 meters right off the get go. And now, this is a 12 meter start. Do not forget that. Coming into the course, Benjamin Stadelbauer. This is the guy who, in one of the previous rounds, actually had an opt up through 38 off and through and ran 10.75 meters to put him in a position where he could produce a score in 10.25 meters. So to see him go out on 12 meters, not at all surprising. Yeah, so I think we talked about it yesterday, asking a uh, 12 meter start versus the opt up and, and what his uh, thought process was on that. And he did, talking to him later, he said, you know, that the wind was a little bit more than what he was expecting. So uh, I think today he's, he's, you know, maybe he liked that direction. We'll see. I might have to ski again. I don't, I mean, certainly, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I certainly like that. And, uh, hey, but and certainly that brings another oh, uh, question a little bit is to what. What circumstances would dictate you start from a certain direction? Now, obviously, the wind plays a factor. You know, sunlight obviously does as well. But maybe some other course feature uh, prompts you to take a certain pass in a certain direction. Like, like if the land like kind of narrows in a little bit before it widens. Yeah, I mean, I know that we've said it time and time again, that gate from the start end is a little bit challenging, but he's actually going to set himself up to take the 10-7 from that challenging gate end, so maybe he's thinking about the 10-2-5 and hoping to get that uh, that gate from the far end. Yeah, that's what I thought too. He wants that 10-2-5 coming back with it. He wants the 10 to 5 from this direction, but yeah. so far, but at the moment he's going to attempt 11 to 5 from this look at that. Good tight line. Nice, look at that. Brings the handle down. Very reminiscent of a one late great Andy Maple, of which he has emulated his style from, uh, from, from start to finish and uh, looked every bit the master of that course at this time. So, any elements that you see out there, Bea, that uh, that kind of stand out for you? He looked great. I, I really like how he turned his head on his soft side, on his uh, one three ball, just to let the ski turn. Just remarkable skiing there from Benjamin Stadelbau, starting on 12. This is 11.25 minutes. Let's not gloss over the fact that. At 11.25 meters and shorter, the handle does not reach outside the buoy line from uh, from the center of the, the course where the boat travels down the middle. There we see uh, Freddie Winter taking his, extending his occupancy of the, uh, the couch. I'm probably making plans for tonight, I don't know. <laughs> there is uh, Aaron Davies eyeing up that couch for himself. We'll see, uh, see if he can get to that point. 
So now Benjamin Stadelbauer, 10.75 meters. Let's get it situated. All right, so as we've said, this we believe is the more challenging gate. Let's see if he can get a good gate shot here and a good start for this 10-7. Bleeds off a little bit of speed going into the gate shot, but he's fine. He's gone round buoy number one. He's good to go round number two. It's very, very important that he keeps a tight line into his pre-turn. Oh, no! And he just gets loose there on buoy number four. And down he goes with three and a half at 10.75, and that is basically destroyed any kind of plans that he has or designs upon the lead. So that means that Freddie Winter has extended his stay on the leader's yeah. couch. Uh, I thought this was a great start here for Benny. I mean, one and two are pretty good. Uh, he definitely just kind of, let's see what happened here at three. Yeah, maybe he was a bit open with the... Yeah, with that open. ski just went over the line. It did go over the line there at four. I mean, he was going to have some ground to work up. He lost a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of space there at three, so he was going to have to work to stay in it, but uh, unfortunately going down on the backside of four ball there. Right you are, so looking at the Benjamin Stadelbauer. I mean, for the first half of this pass, he looked in very, very good shape. But then yeah, he came around and then here, yeah, he lost a bit. But nothing he couldn't have handled. And then he brought the handle down a little bit low and uh, and there was... So at this moment in time, looking at the, uh, the, the leaderboard, uh, a brief glance over, and it shows that Matteo Luceri is uh, currently on the, uh, the bubble on the podium. I'm Tony Leifert, she's uh, Ali Nicholson, she is uh, Beatrizia Yanni, and uh, we're continuing to rock right along with this, uh, with this competition to the last two competitors. We've got Will Asher coming up in a few minutes, but before them, it's going to be the surprise, the surprise package of this competition. It's Aaron Davies from Great Britain. Yeah, so Aaron Davies sitting in the second seat spot right here. I don't know that uh, many would have predicted that. So, uh, fun spot for him to be in and uh, excited to see him go out and hopefully put up a big score. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, for McGarry at the, at the helm of that, uh, that tow boat. And getting ready to bring Aaron Davies into the course. I suspect, suspect it's going to be 13 meters. Let's check it out. All right, welcome back to the dog. We're here with Benny. Unfortunately, going down a little early on that 10-7. Benny, what happened out there? Yeah, I had a beautiful start. One, two, we're, we're definitely on it. And then uh, a bit, bit more than I could chew out of three ball. But it was absolutely beautiful to ski. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful final to be a part of. Well, we're really sorry that we didn't get to see you in the very in the very close fight for the podium, but thank you very much for being here. It was amazing to see you ski again. And back to you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, continuing right along with this competition. I can't get no sleep. So I would suspect we're going to see Aaron Davies go out here at the 13-meter uh, line, if I were guessing. Um, we'll get confirmation on that. It would be an educated guess, considering that he's gone on 30 meters in pretty much every round so far. Or maybe, you know, he, he's consistent on that line length. He doesn't really want to do too, nothing too much to unsettle himself. It didn't stop the likes of Matteo Lisseri from going in 12 meters in the first two rounds. But, you know, you've just got to weigh the pros and the cons. Does it put you in a desirable win, win direction? All that kind of stuff has to be weighed into account. Yeah. And uh, some people just don't like to don't like to go off of their their normal and what they practice. So if he's a normal 13 meter off start, some some people just like to stick with that and keep the rhythm and uh, not change too much. All right, then continuing right along as we uh, con as we bring in our, uh, Aaron Davies into the course. Just a quick reminder that the women's audience prize uh, winner is uh, Ian Keeley. Ian Keeley, congratulations to you, sir. You've won yourself the Conley ski of your choice. Here we go. We 
wait to see who has won the D3 slalom skier of that choice, but we won't know that until the end of the slalom event. And uh, Aaron Davies skiing on the D3, and we're checking in with Lorenzo. All right, welcome back to the dog. We're here with Will Asher, our last competitor in the water. So, Will, you're one of the most experienced guys here on tour. Have you ever seen anything like this at a water ski event? Yeah, not really, not really. This is a lot of fun. Everyone's having a lot of fun on the shore and the energy is out there on the water. The last time I probably saw anything like this would be in 2005 when Van Gillis did a beautiful event here at Caiaphas. So this is going to be the scene we have here at Caiaphas. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, perfect, perfect. So scores are already up there. You have a, you, you already skied very, very good round one, filled something out round two today. Round three, didn't ski to take it easy, ready for a final? Uh, what? Are you ready for final? Oh, yeah, I think. I hope <laughs> if I'm not at this point, whatever. All right, we're pretty sure you're ready. Thank you very much for being here. Best of luck and back to you, Tony. All right, thanks a lot. And uh, for those of you watching this uh, web class, uh, apologies once again for our uh, for our streaming quality. Uh, we, 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 uh, we do have come up with some issues with our upload speed here in this part of the world. We do apologize for that. Uh, if you continue to watch, we certainly appreciate you doing so and uh, rest assured that we will be uploading versions of this webcast in higher quality in the days to come. Here we go, this is uh, Aaron Davies, this is 12 meters and seems to have gone off to a good start as he has done uh, for, uh, for this entire competition. Starting off with two at 10.25 meters in round number one, it's been going on from strength to strength. This was this was a pretty good pass. I think he's pumped up for the scores that he had like yesterday and this morning. So so yeah, let's see how it, it goes. So on dock side we see uh, Will Asher and you see Freddie Winter walking around trying to stay limber. Uh, it might end up in a in a runoff here. So uh, always got to stay ready uh, in that top spot. Yes, let's not forget that. I mean, halfway down in that 10.25 meters, hard enough to get down. But when you're, uh, you're you're in a position where you could potentially tie and uh, not risk a, a fall on three, I mean, the options become really, really simple at that point. Not simple so far as its execution, but just simple from the point of view that it's a uh, that it's that it's a cut and dry score that you need to get to at the very least to put you in a contention to win the event via a runoff a situation possibly. All right, so here we have Aaron Davies coming in 11.25. It is 11.25 meters. Let's see what kind of start he gets. Entrance number one drops down hard with his left shoulder into buoy number one. He gets the ski ahead of back ahead of him. He's, uh, he's halfway down the course, two thirds of the way down the course now on four. Good to go round number five and he runs the entire pass. 11.25 meters, but the challenge ahead of him is significant. 10.75 meters coming up next, but he at least gets to that point there, Ali. Yeah, so we've seen um, Aaron get through this next pass, uh, two of the three rounds, so hopefully we can see him uh, put it down again. Um, and. Uh, Put, a, put up a challenge for our leaderboard. So we have uh, currently, we have Freddie Winter sitting with three at 10.25, and then um, Mateo. Mateo with the two, two at 10.25, and then in the third spot currently is um, uh, Philippos. Yes, indeed, you are right. At this time, Aaron Davies is uh, really, really uh, Keeping his head above water at 11.25 meters, 10.75 meters comes up next. As Will Asher sets himself ready with his gloves on. How soon he gets into the water is yet to be determined. There he goes, throwing those gloves on, the 41, the, uh, 41 tail gloves, which he had a hand in designing. 
if you excuse the pun. All right, so here we come, Aaron Davies, 10 7 5. Do we think that he can run it again? Let's see what kind of start he can get here. Oh, Ooh, broken for it at Whoa. one. He's going to have some ground to make up. Even even more ground off number two, but he's still oh. there. No. And, he, and, oh, and almost, almost ate it into four. He almost repeated his uh, flips from yesterday. From yesterday, yeah. <laughs> So that basically eliminates. So that basically eliminates uh, uh, Aaron. Aaron Davis from uh, making it onto the podium. And with that said, that guarantees Matteo Luzzari third yes. place. At Ab worst. Absolutely right. Freddie Winter still in the lead with three, and Aaron Davis had the chance. Second to last out. I'm sure he'll remember the path that he took to get to that point with uh, with scores that were season's best uh, back to back. But he's still got a lot of, uh, of learning to do out on the pro scene to uh, to get really really consistent to the point where he's uh, competing side by side effectively with with Will Asher and Freddie Winter and the like. But this is certainly a start and uh, he certainly uh, has the potential to go a long way here. Yeah. So close to going out the front there. <laughs> All right, so up next we have Will Asher, our current uh, Pro Tour leader. Uh, top, top spot there on the Pro Tour so far. And uh, season's best of five at 10 5 Weekend best of four at 10 5 So let's see if he can do it again. Um, will he be able to do enough to uh, knock Freddie Winter off of the couch? Or even doing a new core, course uh, score, you know, best score, which is 4 at 10 to 5. Yeah, 4 at 10 to, to 5 is the uh, the current course record here. It was set several seasons ago at the, uh, the Kai Abbas uh, uh, battle in uh, 2005. And it's been a while since everyone has come up the, to these parts and produced a score along the same lines until Will Asher hit the water yesterday in the first round and just absolutely uh, just obliterated the course to tie the course record with 4 at 10 to 5. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see here what uh Will's approaches, uh, whether he elects to start at 13 meters or the 12 meter start. Yep. So a 13 meter start, we believe. And let's check in on Doc's side with Lorenzo. All right, welcome back to the Doc with you, Aaron. We just got done skiing. Man, you've been seen so consistent all weekend. What happened out there today? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I was a little bit tired. Um, you know, four sets in a weekend. A competitive sets it took its toll on me a little bit. Um, I know I got an okay one. I came forward a little. I just thought I right, stay calm into two. I think I just pulled a little too long and couldn't slow the ski down. Um, but you know, I'm really happy with the weekend. You know, I got I ran my 10-7 uh, twice. So really good. You know, I'm the best I've ever done in a tournament, like consistency-wise, and I equaled my PB. So it can't be a bad weekend at all. No, it's not a bad weekend at all for you. We're really sorry that we couldn't see you up there putting up with the big guys. But congratulations to you. Thank you very much for being here in Callafas. Back to you, Tony. So a reminder once again, skier of the day. Get your vote in. Waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play to vote for your skier of the day. Could it be the effort from uh, from Aaron Davies to get to this point in the competition? Could that have earned your vote? Or could the top score from Will Asher be enough to do the trick? We'll see on 13 meter start, beautifully executed. One, two, three, four, five, and indeed the six buoy looks as smooth as silk out there, Ali. Yeah, I mean, Will, again, is one of the best in the business, so like we expect nothing less from Will here. Um, 30, the 13 meter start is a walk in the park for him, so just kind of feeling it out and um, getting warmed up. He set out the round this morning, so this is his first time on the water. Um, and we have, yeah, we got Freddie on the dock, just, you know, like I said, staying limber, shaking out those legs, uh, waiting to see what score Will puts up. Just in case he's going to be around. 
All right, so what scores we got on 10 to 5 so far? We've got the one from Filipos Kiprios. Uh, that's good enough for third. Lucerian second with two. Winter for three. In that ascending order. So, yeah, it, uh, it promises to shape up to be a fantastic uh, crescendo. And if you have any water ski needs, go to wakehouse.com. Wakehouse.com, go shop for your, all your water ski needs. Also, check out Pentalago. Pentalago.com, South Florida's most anticipated water sports community. Five lakes, 42 exclusive, four acre waterfront homes. And it's situated close to Palm City. It is Pentalago. All right, here we go. We're coming in 12 meter. Second pass here. We saw some uh, interesting, an interesting approach from Will yesterday. He elected to go out and only run the 13 meter and the 12 meter in the second round, and then he set out the, the round this morning. So, uh, staying rested, staying fresh. Uh, hopefully, he was just saving it up uh, for a big score this round. Oh, nicely done! Fantastic effort there from uh, from Will Asher. 13 and 12 uh, back to back. He's just so smooth and so polished and precise, you know. But it, but it really is. It, really is the complete package. I'll explain that in a moment, but in the meantime, let's go over to Lorenzo. All right, All right everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome back to the We're here with Matteo Luzzeri, who just secured spot number three on the podium of Cayafa's battle. So, Matteo, how do you feel about that podium? Uh, it's been eight years since my last podium in the Pro Tour. I'm stoked. Uh, I wish I got a little piece of three to battle with the boys, but I I'm going to be happy when I get on the podium, I'll tell you that. Uh, we would have loved to see you battle. Thank you very much. Back to you, Tony. And I bet his father, Fideli Luzzeri, is looking on and being extremely proud of what his son has accomplished, lying in his hospital bed, recuperating from back surgery. Uh, actually took some steps this morning and uh, covered about yeah. a kilometer, so that's, that's encouraging. He's doing time. great. Yeah, Matteo told me he's doing great. He's recovering really well. So, yeah, ciao, Fideli. All right, here we go. Last gear out the water, but could this be the last action? 11.25 meters, 38 off. Seems to be leading off quite a bit of speed there on the gate. Uh, with a little pass coming in. Ooh. Absolutely on fire out there, Will Asher. I will say, not the, the prettiest uh, 11 that we've seen come out of Will, but uh, staying calm, cool, and collected out there, like the pro that he is. Maybe he uh, went a bit too hard, like turning boys, you know? Probably he's just, you know, he can't wait to go, to go there, to go for it. And as I was about to explain, I mean, Will Asher is the complete package. He has the technique, he has the strength, he has the presence of mind. And he has the condition, you know, and this is what you need to slalom at this level, Wabea. Yeah, that's true. Like, you know, like the style and the technique, it's, it's very important, but you need uh, like uh, the body structure to help you. So it's very important to um, prepare during the winter, you know, in the off season to get ready for this part of the season where you have to ski and ski and ski. And Will Asher has been known to do long distance cycle rides, mountain biking, uh, road cycling, all that kind of stuff to improve upon his condition, combined with strength training and all that. I mean, what you're seeing is the, the perfect life run of all of that. Okay, so we're having Will come in right now at the 10-7 pass. This is the must-run pass to challenge the leaderboard. Um, so we need all six from Will here. Will Asher currently in the lead in the Warski Pro Tour standings on 103 points ahead of Nate Smith, who's one point behind. Looking to extend that lead. Let's have a look and see what he's got. Round buoy number five on 10.75 meters, almost left into chance but gets the pass under his belt. That was great. So we'll now have the chance to, to challenge the podium and, and see how far down he can get at this next pass. I mean, I know he's he's looking to get, you know, deep and down and hopefully uh, take that top spot. I'm 
sure Freddy is still warming up a bit because there are like big chances they're gonna ski again. Yeah, so he's been sitting in that hot seat for a while now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, let's not forget, let's not gloss over the fact that because he has the highest score in this competition and it has not been superseded between that time and now, he's already got two points towards the Water Ski Pro Tour standings as having the highest score in the competition before. So, let's not gloss over that fact. He needs three for the win. Now, he's got some, because he's got that superior backup of four, if he gets to one, it's good enough for third. If he gets to two, it's good enough for second. And if he gets three, it will go into a runoff situation. So he's going to need a piece of that four ball yeah. to, to take the win. Absolutely. This is history! Freddie Winter on a dog side. Will ready for the 10 to 5. Ready for 10.25 meters. Let's see what he's got. The lead score is three. His best score is four from the round one. Look at that, a hook up on one. He's good to go round number two. He's good, piece of Come on. four. Is it good enough for yeah. the win? And there he goes, your winner of the 2022 Kyafras battle is Will Asher with another tie of the course record under the assumption that that's four. It might be three and a half, but who cares? It's Will Asher, he's your winner. Great, great job. I mean, you couldn't ask for a, a closer show than that. Um, I think I was curious to see if he was going to make it outside four, but he definitely did there. Um, Got the one that he needed, which was on the second ball. It was, like, it was crazy. Just fantastic skiing there from Will Asher from start to finish. He got round the four. That was enough. He didn't need to ski for the weights to get the full four. He got the three and a half, and that was enough. And that extends his water ski pro tour lead. He was already at the number one spot by one point ahead of Nate Smith. And I suspect that that gap is going to widen significantly. Yeah. So there we have our podium at the bottom. We have Will Asher in first, Freddie Winter in second, and Matteo Luzzeri in third. And there is your podium. Luzzeri in third, Winter in second, and Asher, your winner. Let's check in on Dockside with Lorenzo. All right, everybody, welcome back to the dock. We're here with Will, who just took his rightful spot on the leader's couch. So, Will, how do you feel after this victory? I, I feel amazing. We have had the best week of our life in Caiaphas. I want to I wanna send this to Van Gillis in the sky. He'll be proud of George. He will be proud of George. Oh, well, Will, I'm going to let you get your deserved victory. I'm going to get you, let you get all the applause from the fans. Thank you very much for being here. Back to you, Tony. Fantastic effort there and from, uh, from Will Asher, the lead, and he certainly uh, deserves an extended stay on that couch, although uh, we're going to have our uh, award presentations. There's your leaderboard, Asher, Winter, Luceri, Kiprios, Stanabauer, Davies, Vaughan, Parsons, and Jakob Banya in that order. Three and a half, a 10.25 was what it needed to take the win. Water Ski Pro Tour. He's extended his lead. It's now an 83 point lead ahead of Nate Smith. Freddie Winter gets back in the uh, on the podium placements on 96. Thomas de Gasperi falls to fourth. And Sasha Deskan falls to, to the fifth. And I mean, and Matteo Luzzeri is now in the top 10 with a seven, with a seventh place position on 54 points. So, the award presentations will take place in a few minutes. Ladies, once again, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having us, Tony. All right, we'll be back right after these. This is the 2022 Kai Afras Battle Pro, and we will have the award presentations right after this. Let's listen to some celebratory music from our saxophonist before we go into our race. <laughs>
Hi, my name is Brantley Hawkins. I'm one of the co-founders here at New Dimensions Wellness. My partner and I have over 20 plus years of sports medicine and exercise experience working with the most elite athletes in the world. Together we have developed a proven system that has been sought out by these professional athletes and is now available to you. You will move your body and loosen your joints in ways that you haven't before. It's not your typical weight training, it's not CrossFit, and it's not crunch fitness. Once I got in here, it was a big eye-opener how much different that they go about everything. Denali. No hype. Just science. What if I told you there was a place place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat. A place where that summer feeling lasts all year long. A place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers. A place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down, and your only job is to make lifelong memories. That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com.
into the main prize presentations in the slalom event in the pro women's competition first of all first of all sorry about this i have to start and say that i want to thank a really special lady that helped me and my brother in water skiing she helped greek water skiing she has done everything for that that special lady is Debbie Papa Dimitriou. I own her, me and my brother, what we are now. Thanks, thanks Debbie. That's, that price here is for you. The Greek water ski, I think it's what it is because of you. Thank you for being part of the Greek water ski, of the history that we have made. Thank you, Debbie Papa Dimitriou. Now we can continue. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So, pro women, fourth place with her best score of 411.25 minutes. Let's give it up, please, for Alicia Bagnoli. <laughs> now, here we go with the top three spots in Italy, from Italy with a best score of 411.25 meters and with a superior backup she is from italy her name is beatrice Gianni. <laughs> Place from the United States of America with her best score of two at 10.75 meters, Ali Nicholson. And now your champion, the current world champion with her best score of four at 10.75 meters. It's a new course record, and it belongs to the one, the only, Jamie Ball. Thank you to everyone who came out. You guys, the Greeks have fun. 
Ali Nicholson and your champion in Jamie Ball. George Barcalis and uh, Alicalis, can you come on down and uh, spend some prizes? George Alicalis, present the trophies. spot in eighth place from the United States of America, it's Nick Parsons! And whilst Nick makes his way down, let me tell you that in seventh place from the United States of America, Corey Vaughn! Fifth 
place from Switzerland, Benjamin Stadelbauer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a popular one for you because in fourth place from Greece. Coming down to third place from Italy, his first ever podium finish in a water ski pro tournament from Italy, Matteo spot from Great Britain with his best score of three at 10.25 meters from Great Britain, Freddie Winter. Face this way or that way? Presenting to you the winner in this battle pro am needing three and a half at 10.25 meters to win it. Let's bring up the energy one more time because your winner and the current leader on the wall of water ski pro tour standings, it is Will Asher. Great win. Thank you. 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 Thank you.